There he is. And the star of the show, Fernando. I have the notification. Yeah? Right there. I mean, it's because you have all your notifications. Dude, did you hear about the Apple Watch thing going on right now? Like, you can't buy an Ultra or a 9. What? Um, Some copyright crap that they have with the oxygen sensor in there. My doctor told me yesterday when I went to see him, because he's like, oh, you got an Ultra. I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I got got a gift card to get one, but I can't buy one right now. I was like, oh, crap. And, of course, Haley knew right away. Hmm. It's really weird. I was like, wow, that is strange. Hey, guys, can't stay long on my way to a chest pain call. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry, Ooh. man. Yeah, go check that out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hey, it's oh, Iowa. Man. Iowa Mike. What's Iowa's up? Mike? Mike? Mike from Iowa. You need to come up over here and give us another... Oh, need an adjustment? crack. Oh, yeah. 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 It's just not the same. He does... Oh, man. It's, it, I will say... <laughs> it's one time I don't mind being touched by a man. <laughs> He's good. He's real good. He's like relaxed. Well, it's, it's the doctor part that, that really makes things. He's Stereo like, Steve! Relax. Quick. But yeah. then after that, it's like, oh. Yeah. Dude, baby. feel frisky. Yeah. What's up, Danny? Merry Christmas. How's it from Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. yeah from Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, from Michigan. What's up, <laughs> fellas? Hey, guys. I just want to tell you that I entered Morel's giveaway and won... The speakers. Oh, Thanks, y'all. Congratulations. No man. doubt. That See? is That's fantastic. What I'm telling you. you guys sh- got to get to it. Yeah, you know? very nice. Like, this show is brought to you by MorelHiFi.com. This is the people, they give a lot of stuff. The joys of life, the right there. Life. They make dreams come true. All Actually, right, so this is what I need. I need a million dollars, so please, <laughs> MorelHiFi.com. <laughs> We're not charging that much. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, so. so Hold on. So, Morel, brought to you by Morel, morelhifi.com, morel-america. Why do you have your eyebrow up? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing my uh, Spock. Okay. Um, You don't do a Spock? Dude, I practice for, like, you can do that one, which is the concerned eyebrow. Right. But this is the Spock. Okay. Or the Rock. I think that was the Rock. Well, Spock did it long before the Rock, but either way. Sure. I taught myself to do that. Yeah, you know, got a lot of free time. Anyways. Um, no, it's when I was, Yeah, it will be Because <laughs> my glasses aren't done You don't really see it much When I have my glasses done That's right Because it's Anyways When I went on a cruise <laughs> Yes I did something that I, I'll probably never do again um, You hang out to the side And say like Can you trust me? No, I did that oh, okay. But I did that by myself Oh, okay Because um, I trust myself Anyways uh, I got a massage and all that And it says occupation Okay So I put um, Maker of dreams Oh you know, very like mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know what um, the show you watched yesterday. Uh, watched. Game of Thrones. Very Game of Thrones. Yeah. You know, maker of dreams. So that was what I put down as occupation. Yeah. So I watch Game of Thrones again. I know. Uh, do you know if the Ford Sync backup camera has connection issues? Some days it works. And some days it stays. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, it says contact it. Yes, it's probably a bad camera. If it's in the hitch cam. Yeah, it's probably because you know, it drops constantly. But yeah, it's it's a bad camera for sure. <clears throat> I sound like Marty. Um, the nice thing is, is that if you have an aftermarket radio, it's easy enough to replace out with another hitch cam camera um, mm-hmm. if it's out of warranty. If it's a factory radio, eh, it kind of sucks. But oh, there's Christian dudes. Dude, I just added that time some cool non-stereo industry person got to be on Five Star Show. Hmm. I don't know what he's talking about. Although I will say, Christian is getting himself so much out there. Even Ada mentioned him on the show, his show the other day. Yeah. And I was like, bro, we got we got to put a pin That's in that. Cool, man. We got we got to cool. reel we got to reel him back in. Congrats on the Morel wins. There you Congrats. go, from Christian That's himself. Right. That's right. Uh, if I call myself Doctor, will it make it less weird next time? No, no, because the other guy actually Dr. is a Jack. doctor, but. I mean, don't get me wrong, Jared. I will make the exception for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh wait. And, and Mike says, "I wish I was there right now. It's freaking snowing <laughs> <laughs> all day tomorrow." I believe. Um, you lived here, bro. That's all I gotta yeah. say. You moved to Iowa. I mean, you kind of knew what was coming. No, I'm just saying. You kind of. Oh, and by the way, everyone can now refer to me as Lord. 
Lower? Why lower? lower? Because I'm a I'm a landowner in England, yeah. uh, and so. You just bought a house. I, uh, no, I bought a five square foot patch of land. Uh, Haley, I didn't buy it. Haley got it for me for Christmas, so I got my lordship papers for Christmas, so and I am officially. You gotta show it. Hey, Lord, I, I'll take a photo and put it up here. I just, I, you know, yesterday I played with Legos. I did something I I never do. I had the day off. Haley and I played with Legos all day. So I built a superstar destroyer in Rex, and I got her the typewriter for Christmas. The Lego typewriter. So she just finished that up today. Yeah. So there, it's like that, that cool. I have so many that Legos. So it's ridiculous that I need to build. So I was like, you know what? We got a day off. I have a ton of stuff I need to do, but I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build Legos with, with Haley. Good. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, my car speakers sometimes have no sound until I crank up the volume. What could be the problem? It's a Chevy. Uh, <laughs> no, the problem is is that there's an open coil somewhere. Either the, depending on the car manufacturer, sometimes the magnets are, are loose. Uh, but more than likely, there's an open coil. And what is happening is you turn up the voltage, you're arcing the coil back together, and it allows them to play. Uh, and as long as there's sound coming and they're moving, they'll bypass that 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 spot. So keep in mind, a speaker is an electromagnet. So if you apply more power to it and it can arc, it will get it moving. So you're basically hot wiring the speaker. You're jumping it. You're getting it kind of like the old fashioned car. We used to crank it. You're doing the same thing. You're how you're, old you're, you are, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, but anyways, that's what's happening. You need yeah. new speakers. So, uh, my car speaker sometimes. Yep. I, why did I read that twice? Because I know. Um, Steve. Steve. More game. <laughs> yeah, no, Steve. Steve. Hey, Ford Bronco question. What are you using on non-amplified audio? Uh, we either use... That's funny, you should ask. We've been using... <laughs> we either use the Helix V8. Or? Because um, what we do is we go eight channels. So we'll go the four and the dash. We run four wires to. Mm-hmm. But this has um, SB SD. amplifier... Capability. Capabilities. Or, in, in your world, what you're probably going to run is the Moscone. Um, so you can either use the Moscone, the new Moscones, the new Moscone ones. So the six to eight or the eight, eight to, or six, geez, six to 10 or the eight to 10, both have SB compatibility or the little Picos, the, the eight to 10 or whatever that six to eight, all the Picos DSP amplifiers also have SB capability and that's that that's what the factory amplifier is so if you do that then you don't have to worry about adding the 10 ohm load resistors or 220s and picking all that nonsense both of those amplifiers will just go right in and be magical Magic. and it works great and it sounds awesome and you don't have to worry about the volume problem but yeah so i know you're a big um moscone guy so check out the picos yeah for sure i mean unless they got money in which case you know oh also the pro 830 also has SB compatibility along with the new DSP also has it as well. So depending on what you're planning on doing, all the DSP stuff Aerospace. Uh, is, that, that's Gladen, um, is, uh, well, I was, yeah, oh, I was talking about the speakers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah. Um, all the new Moscone DSP stuff is, is SB, which is what you're looking for. Hey, mm. Christian. Dean bought five years of Disney only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lord Disney, yeah. Um, uh, to send signal to amplifier, not speakers, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, to send signals. So there again, what, 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 okay, so two ways to integrate into the Bronco, something that is SB compatible, which would be the amplifiers, or use 10 ohm load resistors. Now Metra should, I don't know when it's shipping, but Metra has the new purple 10 ohm load resistors. Or if you don't have access to that, use the audio control greens, which is a 20, and put two of them in series. So back to back, out of one into the other, Mm -hmm. just like that. Um, And that will get you the 10 ohm load that they're trying to see. Still, SB compatible amplifiers is a better ticket. It's gonna sound way better. Um, but either way, sun yeah. signal amplifier. Now, as far as if we're trying to get a harness to go into the radio, um, cause that, that might be the other question you're asking. Uh, pack makes the harness for Ford. 
uh, it's the new blah, 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 31 or something like that. And all you have to do is pull out the little, um, right above the gear shifter or the center console, there's like a little piece of plastic that comes out and the plug is facing straight down and you just pull the one little piece of plastic out and plug the radio, plug the T harness in and you're done. There's the plug right there. Yeah. So it's, it's like the coolest thing ever. So never said I was smart. You're smart. You're a doctor. Very smart. I mean, give me a break. Okay. Um, you're a lord now. You can answer a question more than once if you choose. I can do anything I want. I'm a lord. I mean, you know. Hey, Nando here. What's up? What's up? I'm using a Blackbird. I, you know, I knew he was going to say he's using a Blackbird. Uh, uh, so use the 10 ohm, do the 10 ohm load resistor thing on that one, Steve. You'll be fine. We've done that one too. Controls, works, so works great. Metro one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it works. It works. It'll sound good. It's Blackbird. Everything yeah. will be fine. Not, yeah. Blackbird's not SB compatible yet. They're still trying to figure it out. Is that better? Do you that's think that'll be the, yeah. the thing? That's definitely. Um, love the Blackbird, by the way. Okay, 10 ohm. Thanks. All right. So oh, I answer, Arturo. Where? Our tour is there. Oh, there's our t- hey, our tour. Oh, I got too much phlegm in my throat. Mm-hmm. I'm doing my imitation of Marty right now, apparently. Hey, Marty? Guy. Marty Dean. Oh, you said Hey, guys. Nice. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> is it true that it doesn't matter what speaker one uses, it only matters amplifier and tuning to get audiophile sound? Oh, that's about as fake as it can be. I mean, no, you got it. Okay. Think of it like this. <coughs> Everything has to match, right? Like, if you have a nice... Like, if Fernando was standing here, Fernando had on a... I'm standing here. Had a tie... Don't and, believe me. And a shirt down. and a nice pair of slacks, and he was wearing those shoes, yeah. the effect would be lost, okay? What? It would. I know. I mean, I can get away with it because I have the cool five-toe shoes, and they're just exotic, and so people love exotics, right? Uh-uh. And Except for that bar and... and nope. Or a restaurant. Continue. Yeah. Anyways... So everything kind of has to, in order to design a system that makes sense for everyone involved, everything kind of has to dovetail into one another. I mean, you're not going to buy a prime example. I tell you what, we'll use this truck that we're working on right now as an example. So this is a Toyota Highlander. It's in today. We're going to be working on it. Now, he bought his system from Crutchfield. Nothing wrong with doing that. Um, Other than he should have consulted with us first. But he consulted with us second, which means he spent more money. And then him and his buddies tried to put it in and so needless to say he's here now so he has the helix v8 dsp yep and he has an alpine amplifier somewhere around somewhere here around that's going to yeah. power the subwoofer that goes in the back yeah now when he went and bought the speakers for this thing he also bought an amp pro he bought a ton of stuff but he bought some speakers here and now we're also doing a radio we're doing a radio now so he doesn't need this but the point is, is he bought that amplifier there. That amplifier is close to 2000 bucks with everything, parts and labor and all that. $2,000 amplifier. And he bought some inexpensive speakers. So these are like 130 bucks. Sure. Okay. So what you have is you have this really nice amplifier with $130 speakers. Keep in mind, we also took out the two-inch speakers that were in the top of the dash, which is two and a half inch speaker and put a really bright tweeter up there. Ooh, it's going to just be terrible. Um, and so now what we have is we're not going to be able to, to work with that. Like all we're going to have is ticky, ticky, ticky coming from the top of the dash. And uh, we took out a six by nine and put in a six and a half. We of, take it out a six and a half and we put the no, six No, no, but he took out. So he took out a three right. and a half, put a really bright tweeter, took out a six by nine and put six a, and a, half. a six and a half yeah. of a, a very similar quality to what was in there. So now what we run into is we have a DSP, sure, but at that point we probably could have just left the factory in there and tuned that and, and been in a better place other than going with cheap speakers. So it's not like we need thousand dollar speakers. We just need the right speakers to go in here. So for this, Looking at what we had for budget left over is we needed to come up with a solution that was going to make sense for him. Um, sure, we could have put a set of Focal Flax in here or a set of Morel uh, hybrids. Um, sure. We would have spent another $900, $750 to $900 on speakers, which is in line with what the amplifier will do. But that amplifier isn't a ton of power. Even though it's expensive, it's not a ton of power. So at, at that point, we'd have been better off maybe going with some Blam stuff or something like that, get some two-ohm speakers in there. Either way, we said, you know what? We got eight channels. 
let's have some fun. Let's do what we know is going to work. So we went with the Kenwood Exelon 6903. So again, not super expensive speakers, but now we can do four channels up to the three and a half that goes in the dash. So you got the six by nine or the six, three and a half. So we'll get the three and a half back up there to give us the mid range. We're going to go full active. So channels one and two, three and four will all be going to that little three and a half. Put six by nines back in the door. So we got that. And then we went with the matching 174 uh, coaxials in the rear. Okay. So full axon. We can now use all eight channels of that amplifier because you can't bridge a helix. Helix don't allow you to bridge because um, they, they're pre-bridged. So there we go. So we have six channels up front, two channels in the back. Now we can fully DSP everything about this. And we're going to go with a better speaker than what was in there. And so, yeah, to, back to the question is, it's important, but all pieces have to make sense, okay? So you can't just get, like, and there again, if you go the opposite way, let's say you buy a set of really expensive K2s, and then you try to power them with, a, with an amplifier that's really not up to the caliber to do that. You're gonna, it's just not going to work out. So my thought is, and this is what I try to do for our customers, is we try to make everything make sense. So I'm not going to sell you, as much as I'd love to, sell you a Moscone 830. If I'm not going to sell you speakers, they're going to be able to deal with the resolution that's going to come out of that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I'd much rather sell you something maybe like the 1 Series um, or an Arc Audio or something or even a Helix. So everything kind of has to dovetail into one another. <coughs> I have Focal aftermarket speakers. Powered by Focal 5 channel amplifier. Only one of my speakers does it. I check the speakers, they unload are correctly, so not burned is not burn coil. I'm wondering if the crossover could be the problem. So somewhere, okay, so there again, somewhere something is open and it's jumping itself closed. So here's here's what I typically do in this situation is I make one change and see if it moves. So First thing we need to do is figure out, could be an RCA from the head unit to the amplifier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the RCA that goes into the amplifier, and I'm gonna immediately switch it. So right is left, left is right, okay? That is gonna tell me if it's the signal coming from the radio to the amplifier, maybe just a bad RCA. If the problem stays in that side of the car, then we know it's something past the input signal in the amplifier. So good, I'll put that back to normal. Now what I'll do, is I will, I will switch the two speaker wires. So I'll take left and put it on right, right and put it on left. If it stays in that speaker, then I know it's something past the output of the amplifier. So at this point, yes, if you wanted to swap crossovers, okay? And if it stays the same, then that means it's past the crossover and the only thing past the crossover is wire or speaker. So that's, that's the transition of how you would test this. And it might be something you do over a week. Sometimes, you know, unless you can like bang on something and get it to do it, it's gonna be difficult. So that's, the, that's how you wanna test to figure out where the problem is. It's just process of elimination. Don't do, you know, do one thing at a time. Don't go like crazy and be like, I'm gonna switch all this stuff. No, no, one thing at a time. Switch it and then switch it back. Switch it and switch it back. Okay, so that's, that's how you find that problem. Um, is there a dash kit for 2016 Honda Accord Coupe? I don't think so. If Metro doesn't make one, there isn't one. Honda Coupe? Yeah. Metro. I'd say if Metro if MetroOnline.com doesn't list one, there isn't one for that car. Hola! What's hey. up, Arturo? So, are we gonna do carne asada? Oh, when do we do, what? What? Carne asada. What is carne asada? That's what he Who? Um, what is, isn't that steak? Yeah. I don't do steak. I mean, you well, know the answer. Ad. I don't do steak. I, I do pollo. Pollo. And <laughs> <laughs> um, What is a subsonic filter and when do I need one? That is a wonderful idea. Yeah, you wonderful. You carne asada, you add some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You add some, some uh, subsonic filter to it. Subsonic filter is a really dumb way of saying high pass filter. It's <laughs> what it is. Uh, it's a high pass filter for your subwoofers. Um, when do you need it? Pretty much every time. Most amplifiers have some form of a subsonic filter built into it in the back end to where you don't even know it's there. Uh, 
most situations you're going to be turning it on and put it somewhere between 15 and 20 hertz uh, because any uh, there again it's just a crossover all right so it's a high pass filter it's not stopping the sound it's just starting it to roll off because what happens is is your amplifier it also helps the tuning frequency and all this other fun stuff for the subwoofer but really what it's doing and this is why most manufacturers just put it in there and don't even bother to tell you is that they feel like your subwoofer isn't going to be producing sound in those frequencies anyways so to make the amplifier more efficient meaning take less power uh they'll throw that subsonic filter in there so your amplifier isn't trying to put out 500 watts at 20 hertz knowing that the subwoofer in its enclosure might not be able to reproduce that so they just naturally roll it off in the amp but when you have one external that's telling you hey you need to adjust this so turn it on use it um like i said anywhere between 15 and 20 hertz is a good place that's usually where we'll dial it in there is some science behind it you can get super nerdy on it i'm not gonna get into it because you know that usually works for me yeah dean fernando i rarely do radios what's a decent pioneer mechalis head unit multimedia head unit in the thread bro i don't know no, it's a pioneer with, bro. dude pioneer sony sony jvc any i ah. go to town but not that town Pioneer. i okay. honestly have no idea two 10 inch ground zero sqx or morel primo subs 0.9 q ran off an alpine a 90 v currently have one w3 and looking for something different hmm Ooh, that w3 is nice well, yeah. I mean, I would just buy a second W3, but I'm guessing you want something different. I want to change the ohm load. Um, so SQXs, I'm guessing those are the uh, the shallow mounts. I don't know, I guess. I think they are. I think the, if those are the shallow mounts, you probably want to do those over the Primos. Because I think, I mean, the Primos will probably work in that amount of area. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we did Haley's. Was that, that, was a, that was a ported box, though. Yeah, we didn't do a sealed box. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the primos would sound in a sealed box. Uh, of course, Crutchfield didn't say they would fit. I get the joke. Uh, which frequencies do you boost most to warm in a three-way active system? 200. I usually cut all those, so. No boost. I don't typically boost anything. I remove the frequencies around those frequencies, and that'll make that frequency louder. So, um, cutting frequencies around those frequencies will do the same thing hey fernando hey thank you lord dean see it's cool up the river and down the river what's up lance lord dean i think it's gonna stick uh get some el pastor, el pastor what, man, I love what is el pastor it's pork oh pork yeah i can do that pork with uh pine- dude somebody doesn't know i don't eat steak really? but i haven't eaten steak for like 16 years a long freaking time <laughs> yeah yeah i don't eat red meat i know it's crazy right yeah i don't drink coffee either it's, it's crazy um listen i'm the most boring guy you'll ever meet when it comes to uh uh recreational creativity as far as ingesting things but for some freaking reason you are the last one to go to bed and this and all this uh, oh i enjoy and watching and everybody else be crazy but like, i don't drink i don't do drugs i don't drink coffee I don't eat red meat. I, I have a very boring existence, trust me. Um, That's crazy. What's your thought on the Zapco? So I don't have great experience with Zapco like everybody else. It's like, Zapco is amazing. We had one of their pieces sent to us, I the think DSP. They just, they just changed the I, whole I think, line. I think they changed the whole line since yeah. we've had experience with and them. We, so we, I don't know enough that. about them to right. say good or bad. Right. Um, yeah, I, I I wish I could. I mean, they they made some really pretty stuff, like this the copper stuff, the black and copper yeah. stuff looked phenomenal. But I I just I don't know enough about it. Um, man, I joined the wrong time and how to set up subsonic filters on my amp. <laughs> um, no, just like I said, put it between fifteen and twenty. You're all set. Or oh, explanation of it. Oh, oh, you missed it. Dang. Hey, Paul. Paul's car got towed away today. Uh, what's your opinion on the Dayton audio speakers? Any good? Uh, you know, I've 
played with some of the Dayton speakers before and and had some really good experience with some of their little tiny, like they make those miniature subwoofers. Um, I bought a couple of those and played with them. They were really fun. I've never bought like a component set and, and listened to it. Even the little fours that we got when we bought these, we just took them out. We never actually played them to see how they sound. Um, I'm assuming they're way better than their DSPs. I would have no problem listening to them. I, th- I think it'd be fine. Yeah. I'm not supposed to eat red meat. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> uh, I don't miss it. Uh, I was never a big fan. I don't drink either. Much more enjoyable to watch others have fun. Yeah. You know, and you always get stuck driving home. So it makes things, you know, Monterey, Mexico. Monterey. Any place in Cali for audio tune, would you recommend that shop I went and did bad job uh, for type of system I have? Um, So I don't know where you're at in California. It's a really big state. Um, Two place state, not steak. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Audio systems systems has... um, What's he go by? Junior? No, no. The tuner. Oh, uh, Jack Deal. Thank you. Jack Deal. The tuner? Uh, the tuner. Uh, and then uh, if if you're anywhere near... Uh, f- Agora. No, well, no. I was going to say Brian Mitchell. Oh, the uh, Brian Mitchell he's lives in... in Modesto. Ca- if you're anywhere near Modesto, check out... Uh, look for Liquid Trends. Um, that's Brian's place. We're probably going to get here for like probably in 2025, but... No, tuning a car really isn't that bad. But either way, if you want... Like, you actually have in your state the award-winning Brian Mitchell yeah. with the amazing-sounding Cadillac yeah. um, right there. So, I mean, you have one of the best tuners in the world living in your state. But it's a big state, so... Yeah, like, I love steak. Yeah, Yak Deal is the best. Exactly. I could have just scrolled down. I would have seen that. Yak Deal is really good, too. Uh, what do you use to set the crossovers on an amp you install? Uh, a DSP. Mm-hmm. Really just comes down to DSP. So if we're doing a system, there again, it, it really just depends. Most okay, of the so time... It's a passive. Most of the time, we're trying not to... We're not going to do systems with amplifiers that like, are going to require delicate crossover settings yeah. if we do for yeah. example like when we put the um ground zero uranium six channel amplifier in fernando's car that we used uh the 10 time multiplier switch for the uh tweeters the band pass for the mid-range and then the 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 channel for the subwoofer then we use mr million right here oh you got one yeah. i don't know uh mr million himself that's right. We used the. Uh, that's not it. We used the CC one. Oh yes. So this this guy right here, crossover calibrator. If you're trying to dial in a crossover and you have no freaking idea what you're doing and you don't want to guess, this is the tool. This is what you use. This that's. I have one. Fernando has one. And when we have to do it manually, that's what we grab because that's the only tool that'll do it for you. And that okay, it's the only tool you can use to really do that. That makes the most sense. Two Cal Flax 10s and and sub or two Morel Ultimo 8s. Ooh, I'm doing two Flax 10s. Dude, those things are those things are badass. Uh, well, I guess what you suggest I use at the house. Okay. Good afternoon, fellas. Quick question. Sub amp goes into protect at high volumes. Turn off. It comes back on just fine. What do you think? Okay, so why is the amp going to protect? Depends on what protection circuits the amplifier has built into it. Could be a couple different things. Could be voltage. It could be... There's, there's usually three things. Ohm load, resistance, thermal, heat, mm-hmm. or power, voltage. Okay. Two of them are easy enough to test. That'd be thermal. If it has adequate airspace around it and it's doing it as soon as you turn it up, it's not thermal. Easy one there. Second one is voltage. Digital multimeter. Put it on the amplifier. Put it somewhere you can see it. Crank the bitch up, see what the voltage is going to. Okay. If the voltage is dropping significantly, like going like, whoa, nine volts, oh crap, ten and a half, that's gonna tell you right away it's voltage. Okay. Easy enough to test. The third one, not so easy to test, which is resistance. That's gonna tell you, well, maybe your speakers are your, you know, what are the speakers? So if you meter the speakers, the resistance on the speakers, and it's 
there again, it's going to depend on what the amplifier is capable of doing. But if you're below what, and I mean significantly, like if it's a one ohm low and you're at 0.9, then you're probably okay. But if you're at like, if it's a two on amplifier and you're at 1.3, mm, that's, that's too low. Because speakers typically will not, because that's not how you get the ohm load, but um, speakers typically don't meter like exactly four ohm or exactly two ohm. It's, it's, that's a whole nother headache of somebody way smarter than me trying to explain it to me going, yeah, I get it. Um, but either way, um, th that's what you need to test. Okay. Now gain could also come into play in this because that's asking the amplifier. That's a power problem. You're asking the amplifier to put up more power than it's capable of. The amplifier is consuming too much power and it's going to protect. So check your gain also, but that's a voltage thing. So you should be able to see that on the voltage side. Okay, just answered my question. Oh, very good. Very good. Sounds like the Rona, like I said, could be, it's one of those three things. Those are the three things that cause amplifiers to hate you. Uh, do you know if Auto Control will ever have a controller like the DSPs have instead of just ACR3? Mm. They do take an ACR3. I'm thinking you mean like the ACR4, which comes with the Epicenter Micro, something cool like that, or... If you're talking about like something like a conductor or some kind yeah, of, like the, the reality is the answer to that question is for the current stuff, no. Future wise, uh, future stuff coming down the road. Just missed a big fan of all those things, so if he has anything to do with it, probably yes. But um, I'm it's, guessing every every single manufacturer that has a DSP, they wanted to do something like that. So yeah, yeah they want to do something like a conductor. I think everybody yeah. does. I mean, you know, we know that Audison has one now that they copied from them, and they didn't. They came up with all on their own. Um, and, you know, JL Audio's had theirs, but doesn't have LEDs, which is what they did, is they put LEDs on something that looks like that and had more features to it. And um, Helix has their, I'm sorry, Moscone has theirs that will come out here in the next couple months. I got mine. Look at that. You got yours. So everybody knows that's what they're, I mean, everyone's leaning racing towards that so yeah. you know will they have something yes is it going to be something that's going to be wait. backwards compatible probably not um we just have to wait then have you guys have a problem with rattle in the rear deck of a 2000 honda cart if so how do you fix it so anytime we do a honda most of the time we sell them sound treatment um and we sound we use stinger ultimate if you just just as a reference, we use the ultimate, uh, which is butyl aluminum foam on the plastic deck card itself. And we will cover that as much as we can. Um, and then we use regular stealth on the rear deck. Uh -huh. Now, the only problem you run into is that sometimes the plastic piece itself will smack the window, in which case you do need to put some weather stripping around the plastic where it is going to hit the window mm -hmm. so that it will be foam instead of plastic on glass. But yes, yes, the conductor. I, I, man, you know, we're hoping. Our fingers are crossed too. Uh, get some echoing from my front mid bay 6x9. Do you know why? Echoing? No, that's a new one for me. That's kind of weird. You guys get your curious. Yes, Bobby. Yes, I did give yes, it. You have it? Thank, Where, thank you, you so much. Uh, yeah, it's right here in this toolbox. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Got it. Pull it out. There he is. Sexy beast that he is. Bobby. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Bobby, for sure. <sighs> it sucks to wrench under the rain, no matter. Oh, God. Rain and snow. I don't know how you guys do that crap. Like, I will stop what I'm doing in the rain because you can get killed here. Uh, Super Forester with Harman, Kenwood 6902s, or Focal Integration 6x9 component set. All right, so the simplest question, all right, here's what you have to ask yourself with that is what do you really want the f new speakers to do? Okay, I need a haircut. Let's get out of control. Um, the 6902 is a middler, okay, so it's a mid range that is designed to play up. And that particular middler actually does a pretty good job of playing up and staying pretty flat, not dipping out like most of them do in the high frequency range. If you're just looking for a better sound, but you're cool with the sharpness that your car currently has, then the 6902s are, are a good fit. It'll keep the vocal up high. 
Um, obviously, the mid bass is going to be better if you're amping them. But yeah, it'll be a good sound. If the major complaint is, I want these things to sound like they're going to rip my eyelids off. Because I want some highs. I want this bitch to tick. I want it to, yeah, right? Sure. Then you're going to want to go with the Focal. Because the Focal is an aluminum tweeter. Okay, it's not a wide band mid-range. So it is going to tick. Now the nice thing is the mid-range is designed to play up to there. So it's a, a mid-range that has a high enough frequency reproduction capability to couple with the tweeter and provide you a nice mid-range but it will be a little lower because it's down in the door but you will be able to like yes the tweeters the glass the break the i want my tweeters to scream at me well that's why you bought k2s but do you guys do jobs outside of florida <laughs> technically no but for some reason every time we go to arizona to no, mobile I mean, solutions we, do. we go and work there but yeah. it'd be mobile solutions is about it but yeah. no and yeah and it's a struggle because you never have the tools you need it's just what it takes okay so anyways we to recoup do, we, gotta re- mobile, mobile. we gotta do mobile tuning yeah mobile. screw this building stuff let's just let's just run a u-haul and just goes down so what we got here is a highlander what we're going to be doing to it today and tomorrow is we're going to be putting in this Helix uh, 8 channel that is going to be running full active. So four channels are going to go up to the dash to run the Kenwood 6903s full active. Then we're going to be powering two of the channels to the mid base here in the doors, the 6x9s. We're going with the Kenwood 174s. We're putting an Alpine 507 in the dash. That is going to power up to the amplifier. The V8 is going to go here. The Alpine subamp is going to go here. Okay, we're going to run two power wires, one up that side of the car, one up this side of the car. The RCAs are going to come in. The factory amplifier, and the reason why this is all apart is because the factory amplifier is buried down in here. Totally sucks. has the JBL system. So we'll be pulling. We've already remade the harness. Uh, he actually took it apart because they tried to do this on their own and decided, like, that was a bad idea. So this is the amp, the pack harness here. Um, I have taken it all apart and repinned it so that the wires actually make sense. So the great thing about a harness is it's universal work in all these cars, but the pins are always going to be different. Um, and it's easy enough to pull it apart and pin it the right way. I just want the harness. I'll fix the rest. So pack harness in there. In the back, we're going to put an L7T in the factory box. It's going to go back here and sit in this area. This all, of course, is just taken apart right now. There's the Alpine amp we're going to be putting in. Uh, we're just test fitting where we wanted these amps to go. Um, we've come up with a unique looking amp rack, which is this guy right here. As you can see, it's a little bit weird. There's actually a slit right here that sits up, so the air vent will be able to pass up underneath this and still actually function. Um, but these is for the seats. And then there's a giant opening in the car for all the wiring to go through. That's why this is indented, so we'll see that tomorrow we'll see how that fits into the car but that's it that's what we got that's what's happening here in the install bay on this beautiful wednesday that's right guys so don't forget this show is brought to you by morelhifi.com don't forget to check them out and here on instagram morel underscore america this is the place that you can get entered to all these giveaways that they do so. you know it's funny too the one thing that most people forget about when they're talking about toyotas is morel actually makes a set of six by nine components yes and big bat, big, big, big mid bass. Yeah. But the tweeters, the thing about Morel is that their tweeters actually play extremely low. Yeah, they do. So when you're trying to get a tweeter sound, but also keep some of that mid range feel mm-hmm. in the Toyotas, the Morel is a badass solution for yeah. that. I forgot to mention that. They make an eight too. Oh, they do. That's right. They, they also eight. make an eight, which would actually fit Ooh. easier. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's you true. can do the Morel eights. It's an my, eight and tweet. You know what is my favorite? No. My favorite is the hybrids. Because you have a set, and they're awesome. Because I have a set. Yeah. Hybrids. Check them out. Yeah, the, well, that's what we did in the Forerunner last week. Yeah. Morel hybrids. All right, guys. Go. That's it. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. This is, most, this is the most busy you guys will see him. I'm just pretending, you know? I mean, you know. Every time the camera hits, it's like, oh, shoot. That'll look busy. Doing something. Okay. Now they don't. They're gonna fire me. I don't want that.
All right, so the Highlanders in day two, and this will be this will be the final day of installation. Um, it's four o'clock right now, our time. We get out of here at six. He's finishing up. Hey guys, what's up, Mike? Still freaking snowing. Still raining. Danny. Um. Anyways, so this will be the final day of installation on this. More than likely, what's going to happen is we'll get it plugged into the laptop and just verify. And then we'll come in and tune it tomorrow. Um, so he's finishing up the fuse holder. So right now we're, we can't do anything. So at this point, it's me just checking everything else that I can get done with that happening. So we'll kind of go through what everything is and, and how it went today. So yesterday we talked about uh, the speakers, the 6903s, mid base, 6x9 goes in the door here. The C3s go up in the top of the dash, Kenwood Exelons. We're bi-amping those, so we're running four channels to the dash, two here, two there. That's channels one through four. Channels five and six, seven, eight out of the rear doors, which is a set of 174s, I want to say. Anyway, six and a half inch coaxial Exelons. Underneath the seat, providing us with the eight channels of audio, is the Helix V8 DSP. Um... Yeah, so uh, there again, one through four there, and then the other four there. We're running six channel input, two channel output. This has a remote out and remote in, so remote in comes in, remote out goes off. Um, this is quarter inch blown PVC into the car, two back pieces, holds this down in place. Uh, ground point for this is here in the kick at the factory point. Uh, power wire goes in through the firewall on this side and the factory amplifier is located right here uh, he had already taken this apart because they were trying to do it themselves they had the pack audio t harness so we lengthened that repinned it we showed you repinning it yesterday and no more relays exactly um and also the inputs on the amplifiers are really sensitive so you don't you don't need like what you needed before. So you can almost breathe on an amplifier and turn it on now. So, oh my gosh, it's Phantom Chris. Uh, so anyways, this is going off, plugs in there. The two dash speaker wires run up into here. Uh, so they're the extra set of wires and they're attached here behind the radio. 507 in the dash Alpine. We just got done updating that. If you've got a 507, a 509 or a 511, please for the love of God, check your software on it if it does not say 5.0 update it because the 5.0 software update on this is incredible it actually is this is a viable radio now thanks to the 5.0 software so that's a ilx 507 which is a 7 inch a 509 which is a 9 inch a 511 which is 11 inch do the software update Make sure it's on 5.0 software. It's very important. We just got done updating this one. It takes about 20 minutes to a half hour to do the software update because it's a total rewrite. All right, so that's that. In the back, he is going with the L7 wedge box with the grill. So I just got done putting the grill on. We have our finished cable that comes out and attaches to this so that he can move it around all across the back here. Um, six and a half and then underneath the driver's seat is the alpine sub amp that we're using to power the system so the rca comes across here and attaches into this so this will be the base side of things so basically we've got nine channels of audio happening in in this vehicle um where did you end up grounding this one um under the seat, right there. Right seat there. Bolt. I mean, you can see it right there. Oh, yeah. There you go. Right. Seat bolt. Okay. So, grounded it there. Posi ground. Um, and so, back to the front here where he is finishing up the power fuse distribution. For the power side on this side, we did go through this side of the car. So, we got one wire coming from over here, which you can see along this route. And then the other one comes from back in this area. I don't recommend it. Don't recommend it. Totally don't <laughs> recommend that. That was a pain in the ass. Uh, definitely stick to this side. Way easier to deal with. Um, you can get your hand up and there's a giant grommet. It's so much easier 
to deal with this side of the car than it is that side of the car. So that, that does make things easier. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't miss living in Missouri, the snow. Yeah, oh no, I, 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 I agree. That's why I don't miss Michigan. Um, but yeah, so here we go. Here's, here's our snow. Uh, we actually have kind of gray sky happening right now. It wants to be blue. You can see where the blue is just fighting to come out. It was blue maybe an hour ago. I went for a walk. I had to go pick up some windshield wipers for the girls. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's uh, that's the weather here. Uh, if I'm keeping my factory head unit, do I need to buy... Uh, any of the iData Maestros for the Toyota 2023 Tacoma. And what speakers do you recommend for the dash? Just bought SPL Show for the front and rears. Um, if the Tacoma... Okay, so here, there, there's a lot of ways to answer this. There's no, like, quick and easy thing. Um, if you need the T-Harness to integrate into it, uh, PAC makes the T-Harness. You go pack-audio.com, find the T-Harness. If you're just putting straight power into the car, meaning you're not doing DSP, you're not doing anything like that, just doing straight power, then just buy some nice amplifiers that have good high level to low level capabilities built into them. If you're doing DSP, that's where it becomes more exciting. Now, as far as whether you need an RR or non-RR, that's gonna depend on whether it's a JBL system or non-JBL system. This has a JBL system in it. So because it has a JBL system in it, if we wanted to keep the factory radio and integrate into it, we have two choices. We have this guy right here, which is the Pack Amp Pro, which is AP4TY12. Or we have the iData version of this that would go into either an Arc Audio PSM Pro or a Rockford 360 or an Arc Audio Blackbird. Um, so those, that's where that comes in. If all you're doing is basic Toyota Tacoma and we're going to just put some amps in it, make it loud, just get a good, you know, good amp with a good high level to low level. If the amps you're que if you're questioning the amps and their capabilities is whether if they have good high level to low level, obviously you could pick up the audio control LC5i, LC7i, LC2i Pro. There's there's a ton of those to, that you could choose from. Um or get a DSP that has that. Now, if you're gonna go DSP, that's where things get interesting because you have to be able to correct for the Toyota signal that's coming out. It's, it's, a, it's a, not a great signal to start as a base. Uh, from that point, you may wanna look into some form of DSP that has de-equalization capability, or if you like to say what, you might just wanna look at like a kicker key lock on the front output of the radio and let it do all its de-equalization for you. The key lock is an amazing high level to low level adapter. However, if you're not gonna put a DSP on the other side of it, you may not get the sound you're looking for. Um, however, if you're looking to get bass, you may wanna go with the key lock just to de-EQ the bass side of it so that you can bring back some of the bass that's getting rolled off in the radio or just actively not there. Um, so there, there's a lot, like I said, it's not a, it's just like, do this. Uh, as far as what you should do for speakers in the dash, pick up a set of SPL Show tweeters, man. Go crazy. Put those up in the dash and just let it blast out. Um, we've done it. Yeah. Uh, well, shaking, guys. What do you think of the Audio Frog 600.1 mono amplifier? I love it. It's actually one sitting right there waiting to go in Fernando's car as the replacement for the car stereo lab. So we have the four channel and the mono block waiting to go in there because we wanted two badass amplifiers. And Andy was nice enough to send them to us. So after we did the dyno and checked them and did all that fun stuff. So we did dyno those amplifiers and you can check that out. Um, they do power. They're nice. Hey, Dean and Fernando. What's up, El Fernandez? Uh, I have a brand new JBL MS8 in box. Do you think it's worth anything now? I think most of the guys that want those have them. Um, there might be a couple guys out there that are just like, oh man, yeah, I don't know though. I mean, I haven't heard a lot of people ask me for those. I think Ada has a couple of them because he was a big fan of those. And obviously Andy has one because, well, it was his. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. I've only had the pleasure of working on one, and I didn't like it. <laughs> but there again, I didn't know enough about it to to deal with it. So it wasn't it was it was more me just being ah, get off my lawn and not understand it. Alpine five eleven. You know at what volume does it distort? You know we never bothered to test those. We haven't done that in a really long time. Um, I think we we know. It's just I don't. Know. I mean, I don't think it's any different than it was in the past. Um, but I think it's like one, one from the top. Yeah, if that. Uh, it just depends, like, if you're using bass and treble or not. Um, why do some high-low converters melt? Can they not handle head unit power? Do they have any RMS limits? Actually, yes. Yeah, good question. Um, so, funny. Okay, so this is what you're talking about, right? Ooh, look at that. All right, so this was what was known as... This is, no, 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 that's not... Hang on. I have all kinds of pieces. Okay. I love it when you guys ask questions. I have props. All right, so this is what's known as an s 35. The 35 stands for how much wattage it can handle coming into it. They also make an SNI 15. You can see how useless that would be. So, this is designed to handle 35 watts of input power, which in most worlds would be enough. However, like this guy, this was taken off, and what was happening is this was connected in a Lexus to the subwoofer output, which was a hell of a lot more than 35 watts. Okay, so that's that's what you got to keep in mind. Now, there's a voltage rating for these that no one ever paid attention to back then but they sure as hell pay attention to now so in the owner's manual of the amplifier it should tell you the input voltage that it can take in and that is important so most amplifiers now can take anywhere between 8 and 10 volts of input and how you can check for that is actually really simple um, if you have a digital multimeter which i know you do Take it, connect it to the, the output, the speaker output, you know, left and right speaker or positive and negative speaker, and play a test tone, a zero dB test tone. If you're doing subwoofer side of things, play a 40 hertz test tone or 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Pick one. If you're doing a highs output, try something like a thousand hertz, 5,000 hertz, 500 hertz, somewhere in that range. Play a plethora. For one, I'll show you the EQ band. Uh, but see what that output voltage is at those specific frequencies um, or somewhere in that range. And that'll tell you, hey, can my high level to low level adapter ha ha handle that? Now, I'm going to go into this PDX, I'm sorry, not PDX, the Helix amplifier we have here because it has input sensitivity. All right, so here we go. So we're going to check this and where it says right here, input sensitivity, RCAs. Uh, it says four to eight volts, which is good. And then if we come down here, it says high level, it says 16 or max 32 volts. So this can take up to 16 volts, which is a pretty, pretty good amount of power um, with a max of 32 volts. So that's like, boom, you know, like a quick hit because it's not going to sit there and stay. Music is dynamic, so it's going to move up and down. So basically this can work in pretty much every high level to low level situation you're going to run into in a modern vehicle and also an older vehicle that this is capable of dealing with it you wouldn't need an external high level to low level for this now most dsps can take again you have to check can take up to 20 volts of input some can take 40 volts of input which is like that and so that's what you would need so the reason why this happens is because inside of a is a load resistor so these are resistors these are the same style load resistors that we use when we do oh you know what i just moved them crap ah this right here so underneath this shrink wrap this is a load resistor and this is you know this is what we put on a factory radio to tell it it still has a speaker connected. This is the LGG green, also known as the 20. So these square shapes right here are the same as these. 
these are designed these get hot because what they're doing in this application is they are reducing the amount of power coming out of the radio so they're crunching it down and as we know anytime we take something and try to reduce it it's going to form heat and that heat can melt the plastic if it is more power than is physically designed to handle so that's plastic that's going to melt now when you come over to something like this this uses a much different method this doesn't it's fire time yay somebody's having a bad day so these are metal but these don't use resistors like that it's a different technology that these use this is more of an electrical way of doing it than just standard old school generic no power having this so hopefully that kind of demonstrates or answers the question that you're asking and i'm just going to put this in here now so that i know where it's at Wasn't that exciting, Fernando? Oh my God. Look at the excitement on his face. If Fernando would give, uh, no, Fernando's not ready to give up the 830. It's, he doesn't, he has a 430, the 830's mine. Um, what product or products that you want to try and haven't? Ooh, Lance. That's a good question. Ooh. So we just got to do the ARC audio amplifier that I've been, uh, the Blackbird, which, Sad thing is, I actually have one. I just haven't been able to play with it. So, because you know how it is. Who's got time? Um, so, we finally got to use one of those the other day, which I've been just chomping at the bit to play with the Arc Audio software. Because it, it works differently when it's actually connected to the different DSP. So, being able to play with that, um, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, nothing like the stress of learning a new DSP software now. Um, trying to think I, I i really want i just i'm not excited about it but i do want to play with the alpine the new wave your phone around stuff um just because it seems almost seems too good to be true so i just want to try it just you know we had such great success with the key um so i think that would be fun um i don't know is there anything you can think of play yeah, just something you want to play with? Uh, I want to play with a new Samsung Galaxy. Oh, phone? No, you don't. You're such a liar. Um, some dude makes a bass knob that I saw the other day that I kind of want to see. Um, I'm sure some of you guys know what it is. It's got a cool readout on it. It's like Bluetooth connection. Uh, that looks really cool. I'd like to play with one of those. You have one. Um, we don't, no, no, this is different. This has like a display on it that... No, no, it actually, it's like a graphic EQ. It's not, it's not the same as um, Berg's. It's a different one, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Dean's favorite DSP is the Dayton. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, you know, I'd like to do a system with the with the Moscone um, zeros, just because. Like, who wouldn't? You know. I'd like it to be my system that I'm doing, but I'd still like to do it. Uh, what is it about the Arc Blackbird that you like? So, one of the things, like, we got to use it once. So, to say, like, oh, my God, it's my new favorite, it's not. Because I can, believe it or not, I'm one of those type of people that can actually have more than one favorite. I can like multiple things and be okay with it. Um, I actually like to collect things that I like. So, like, I don't, I'm not just like, ah, if you're not on my team, you suck. I, you know, Focal, you know, Morel, yay. No, I like them both. I, I can do that. I can, I can enjoy multiple things in life. Um, so we didn't, we didn't get really deep into the software because we didn't, we didn't have to for what we were doing. But there's certain features on it that just make a lot of sense. And I can see that is going to be extremely useful as time goes on. For one thing, every band of the EQ is whatever you want it to be. Okay, so it's it's parametric, it's graphic, it's a high shelf, it's a low shelf, any, anything you want. Every single band, and there's not 30 bands, there's like 34 bands. Plus there's like five extra bands. There's a whole extra EQ section, which is ridiculous. Um, but some of the simple things that, like, like we talked about, being able to design uh, your bass knob, 
and, and how it it goes up and down the thresholds. That was extremely cool. I've never had that in a product before. So to me, it was like that was really neat. Um, the uh, iData interfacing and being able to change the the volume, meaning your zero point, your max volume, you can change all those things, which. That's something I've never thought of because it's never been presented to me. But once we got to do it, it made total sense. And it was like, oh, it was so awesome. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, I, I love this top tier DSP stuff, like the Moscone, like the Arc, like the Odyssey. Um, they just, they just, they have the budget to put in a lot of features that you, you don't know you need them until you, until you know that they're there. Like, you know, people always, that, you know, I, I had a rep that says, well, what can I tell you about? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what to ask. I don't know what I don't know, you know, and, and working with this product, sometimes it's like, oh, I didn't know it did that. I didn't even know that was an option. And that stuff like that gets me excited. So, um, it's just a really cool amp. The size is tiny and it just it packs a punch, man. It's kind of cool. Uh, I work for pack and I still don't recommend using these on most new cars. Oh yeah, the those yeah SNI 35s. Don't ever use those. No one should be using those. The, the fact that they still make them is annoying. Like some of the stuff that they've managed to let fall through the cracks, TR7, um, and they still make an SNI 35. Like, pfft, come on. Uh, what amp can you recommend for front component speakers and two-way rear? I have Kicker KS series. I mean, a key. Just go with the key, key 200.4. You know, you can run it as any way you want. If, I mean, if you're looking for a six channel, uh, they they also make a six channel um, in both both of their lines. So check that out. Have a new year, guys. Off to do end of month, quarter, and year. Ah, oh, have fun, Chris. Uh, is there anything similar to how the Mercedes-Benz system works with the voice controls for everything in the car? No. I th- I, th- I think it's coming. Like, I, I know... Um, like, Apple's trying to make that happen with CarPlay. They talked about that in their Worldwide Developers Conference that everyone got to see. Um, but right now, no. Because... What's the what's the Amazon chick's name? Alexa. So until like Alexa or Siri get integrated in through stuff like that, I don't I don't see it happening. Um, so like CarPlay and iData would have to ha- go on a date and make a baby, and that that would have to you know, and then you'd have to have a car that had full iData control and. It could happen, but I, I don't really see it any time in the next two years. But, hey, I love being wrong. Don't get me, I love it when I'm wrong. Uh, the new Alpine Hedging is pretty cool. We have them. I, we just haven't had time to go play with them yet. I'm Team Kicker. We know. Uh, I collect a, a lot of vintage components, Lord Dean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing. Um, well, there you go. Have I say it all the way? A lot of things get you excited. Actually, be surprised. A lot of things don't get you excited. Haley can attest to that, man. It annoys the crap out of her that, you know, like she bought me the Lordship. I was excited for that. That one, that one. But, you know, she wants me to be here. And I'm like, here? Um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not like, oh, my God. Uh, just bought a Master High. Oh, oh Power Master High. Put off the. That says 169 at idle, 29 at cruise, 25 at top end. Is that any good for a sound system? So, <laughs> you gotta think of it like this. Is it any good for a sound system? Probably. Unless, the simple truth is, you bought this alternator and the car requires the amount of amperage that you just told me. So, for example, if the car needs 69 amps at idle, 290 at cruise, and 235, like if it needs those things, then no, it's terrible, terrible for what you're trying to do because there's no excess, there's no extra, there's no, huh? So the idea is that you get a bigger alternator, and that alternator is designed to give you the more amperage that you need to power your external things. So, for example, if the car only needs 
100 amps or 80 amps and you say okay cool so that gives me this 80 amp extra or 90 amp extra then cool yeah it's gonna be great because you can throw a you know a, an amplifier in there maybe two maybe an extra battery and rock on right that'll be perfect for it so the other thing too is if you are going to put a system in there and there is extra power where is it going to go to be stored so um, an extra battery hopefully will be going in to, to hold to capture to, to stay charged so at peak performance times there's something there to draw down as opposed to just mainlining off the alternator um, but then again it all just depends on how big the system is and what the car requirements are so it could be great don't know uh what's a good three and a half inch dash speaker to replace dash speakers in a 2009 nissan ultima check out the kenwood c3s They're, you're not gonna go wrong you guys close uh for new year's yes yeah we're gonna be um because new year's eve is what sunday so monday we're yeah so uh fernando needs to night you and then you will be with elton john yes sir elton john yes <laughs> jerry R richie gervais what's his name the comedian british dude oh god he, he just yeah, can't sure yeah yeah he, well you watch netflix i don't have it. anyways yeah he was talking about elton john this weekend i'm gonna watch <laughs> his new show uh fernando yes netflix freshly cut does he cut his own hair hell oh, no, no. Bro, he pays his homies to do that. Yeah. Man, he comes in. You got it, what, cut, like, the day before Christmas? Yeah. 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 I need to get mine cut. Sure. I know. Hi, Lord Dean. What is the best CD head unit for my 2017 Mustang GT Premium that you turned tuned for me back in May? I know I'm old school because I'm old and like using CDs. All right. Okay, do we want a screen with a CD player, or are we just looking like for a CD player? Because, I mean, any screen that has a DVD player is a great CD player. Um, if we can do a, you know, I think we still have some of the 9 Series Kenwoods that have CD, DVD built into them. Um, that would be cool. Um, otherwise, yeah, just get the best CD, best DVD player you can, we'll have an awesome CD player. So, excellent all the way. Uncle Bobby B. Ah, Jeff. Jeffrey Smith. Uh, do capacitors really work so that my lights don't dim, or is there an alternative? <sighs> oh, there's got to be a better alternative. Yeah, batteries. You need batteries. Batteries and power. A capacitor. Uh, you know, they, they've been... What's that? Oh, I four of them. Or a super, super capacitor. Super. Um, you know, they've been saying that since I started in car audio, that capacitors, have, and maybe back then they might have, but they, I, they, them, they right? didn't. Capacitors, yeah, not like they, not very good ones. Most of them are crap, you know. Um, listen, when it comes to capacitors, I think it's the biggest waste of money ever. We used to put tons and tons of those things in. I just call them spray paint can. Uh, voltmeter is attached to spray paint cans. You know, it was... They're trash. Um, you know, pick up a small battery. There's uh, Metro just came out with a bunch of uh, lithium, small lithium batteries. If you're not into going like full DIY, if you'd like something a little bit more like commercial, um, something like that probably better. Uh, after. Okay. Flow B101. Oh, the Flow B. Yeah. <laughs> no, Flow B was the vacuum uh, razor thing that you put on. You know, they there was a good commercial. So you could cut people's hair. Uh, it was the, the razor was attached to the vacuum. Okay. So it would suck the hair up, and then you'd just go over it and it would it'd pull the hair up. So if you wanted it, you know, it had all these attachments. So if you wanted four and five inch hair, yeah. you put the four or five inch or. 12 inch or whatever it is and yeah. you just roll over the head and suck it up and it would trim it to that length sure. yeah it's called the floby baby uh fernando i didn't get a nando fuse holder under my christmas tree 
Sorry, Bobby. Oh, man. I know. I have a Moscone 530 amp mounted in my back seat. Can I place it somewhere else in an Accord? Huh. Rear deck, maybe? Yeah, you could, I mean, you could definitely put it on the rear deck. We've built plenty of rear decks for those. Um, but it won't go under the seat. I'm looking at the 830, which is the exact same size, and there's no way that's fitting under the seat. So I, I would I would have to build a rear deck mount, and and then you have to face it up, so the fans have to go up. You can't, like, flip it upside down and put it there because then the heat rises in the wrong direction. Um, so, yeah, a lot of work. Um, hey, fellas. Still no snow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any nice F-250 Tesla-style head units available? So, when we were at SEMA, we got the... I, I had some time to talk to the Linkswells guys. Uh, Linkswell makes the new version 6.0 of the F-150 radio and the Mustang radio, which is what I wanted to talk to them about because I wanted to get one for my car. Um just because I want to put one in and beat the crap out of it and, and be able to answer this question and be like, yeah, get the, get the links. Well, I had the ability to play with it for five minutes while I was sitting in the car and it's pretty badass. Um, I know there's some guys in the industry that absolutely love them. I know some guys in the industry absolutely hate them. I don't know, but if I was to look at anybody's, I would look at the links. Well, it looks really badass. Well. Uh, it would work with the Dyson. I don't see why not. Um, how many amps can you connect to one remote wire and can cause power drain when the car is off? So it all depends on the amplifiers. Most branded amplifiers nowadays that are using modern technology don't require that third of an amp or half of an amp to turn on. They need a. They need very little. Just it's it's looking for almost nothing, and when you put too much voltage into them, it, it can be a bad thing. Um, or when the relay snaps over, it can be a bad thing. So you definitely, you know, we've turned. So in most cases now, if you're going to be doing multiple amplifiers, you're going to have some form of either a high level, a DSP, an EQ of some kind. So that also solved a lot of the problems because all of those, all of, all of these have input, output, remote turn-ons for a multitude of reasons because in some cases you don't want your remote turn-ons turning on at the same time, okay? So you want the radio to turn on the DSP or the, the processor or the line level or whatever it is and then turn on the amplifiers. It avoids pops and ticks and stuff like that. So... Um, Second part of the question is, uh, does it cause a drain on the car? No, it doesn't. Uh, another thing of the modern amplifier is that it has what's called idle current. And usually in the owner's manual, they'll tell you what the idle current of the amplifier is. Why that's important is because let's say this Highlander, we were keeping the factory radio because it's JBL. We were going to put an Amp Pro or use AR to do an ARC or a Rockford. The car itself no longer uses remote turn-on per se, okay? So it uses a digital version of it. The reason why is because when you come out to a modern car and you hit unlock or it auto senses you or does whatever it does, most of the back end stuff starts to boot up like your computer would at your desk. You know, you hit the button and you walk away, you drink your coffee. Well, it doesn't have that kind of time. It's just got to work. So it's hyper booting up, all right? So as soon as you hit that go button and the screen turns on that is not the screen that is only the screen turning on the radio in most applications it's already been on it's already working in the background it's already powering things up it's already communicating with the car all these things are already happening the visual you get is the screen turning on oh look at me i'm turning on and then the same is true when you walk away. When you walk away, you shut the door, you arm the alarm or whatever, and you walk away. The car now slowly goes to sleep. And that could take up to three and a half, four minutes. So those amplifiers are going to stay on for three and a half to four minutes. But 
there's no audio passing through them and they know that so they go to what's called idle current and idle current is like next to nothing so no now in a ford fords are like cocaine hookers <laughs> i mean these things just wake up and go crazy for 20 seconds and go back to sleep you know we'll be sitting here and there'll be a ford and we'll be at nighttime you know and it's all quiet and then the ford will just go ding, dong, tuck, 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 tuck. and you'll be like what the, what the hell was that okay and when it did that it woke everything up in the vehicle said is everybody okay and then went back to sleep so that's why these amps go into idle current and that prevents you from killing your battery so it just now don't get me wrong if it were to stay on for 20 30 minutes it's going to kill the battery but the remote turn on controls the power output of the amplifier so if there's nothing coming into the amplifier over the power then it is going to be off and it's not going to draw any power unless you just have an old crappy amplifier i mean arc makes a ton of different amplifiers the only ones i can talk about are the um blackbird style amplifiers because those are the only ones we're carrying because that's all we can carry we have another arc dealer dealer um if you'd like a, a good recommendation on what to put into your vehicle give arc a call brian is standing by waiting to answer your question he would love to help you so by all means johnny what's up arrow 8 to 12 turns on two amps no problem of course it can turn on a ton of amps uh input output carburetor full sit want me to push freak push thank you i'll use the moscone dsp to power on three amplifiers yeah you, no problem doing that but yes we convinced christian to go with that so that he'd stop buying crappy dsps hello from brazil um so i'm allowed to call brian now you don't have any arc audio equipment bro you should call sage and bug him don't do that. Don't do that. Um, you call Nick already. Hey, Fernando. Yes, sir. Give it to me, man. Wow. What are you, it's, what are you doing? I'm trying to put my... Yeah? That makes sense, right? No. It's that time. Is that time? at time. I mean, it's almost. Dude, do your ad. <laughs> that, that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't work like that. It's just like, you know, it's not natural. It's forced to be like, you know, that's not. Dude, I got a box here that I'm dying to open. Cut yes. your promo so that we can open the box. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can open the box because this show is owned and brought to you by morelhifi.com, right? What are your favorite speakers? My favorite speakers, that's the one that they are right there in the top <clears throat> behind the Illusion. Uh, they are the hybrids, three-way set. I can put the three-way set in my car, but I put the two-way, right? And they sound amazing. So I would change, that would be probably the only speaker I would change to put in my car. Yeah, you put yes. those back in? Yeah, I, I would put those back in, yes. Hybrids, Morel hybrids, they amazing. Check them out, morelhifi.com. Uh, they have new product. You should check them out. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but they have a <coughs> brand new product. Do they? They do. Either way. Um, here, Instagram, morel underscore America. Natasha does a lot of giveaways in here, so you don't know if they might get you know, a giveaway for New Year's Eve, something like that. So check them out. Like, share, do whatever you want to do, guys. But... Thank you so much for being a sponsor of the show, RoyalHiFi.com. I have a question for you. Oh, I don't know. If I it says, answer. if you had a Helix DSP because yes. you had a stock hedge unit, yes. and then you upgraded to a Pioneer, would you keep the Helix DSP? A hundred percent. Like, I would change the radio. <laughs> You'd put it back to factory? <laughs> I would put it back to factory. Um, <laughs> No, no, I mean, no, that's great. If you have a, a radio, you're still using your DSP. Totally you need know? to use your DSP. 100%. You need to retune the input side of it. Yes. But uh, other than that. Make sure all the the, uh, the EQ on the radio is flat. 
You know, nothing changes, nothing boosts. And, and, and I will say, you have to go in and do that on a Pioneer because a Pioneer comes set to powerful. Yeah. Has, yeah. has so a lot of internal you got, you crap sound. That. And um, I believe the radio clip is uh, 38. Yeah, it's 38. 38, so. Yeah. Definitely want to keep. 100%. Keep the DSP. Yes. Get rid of the heart, just keep the DSP. Yeah, just Bluetooth into the DSP and call it a day. Or, or <laughs> digital into yeah. it. You got a knife? Oh, you got a I knife. It's right there. Knife. Yes. It's right there. We have oh, a box. What? Okay. okay. We have a box. We have a box. This box is so exciting. Why is it so exciting? Uh, well. You know why? Why? Because it has 5K. 5K we have it in the box. That's right. Okay. I watch a lot of ads for people that they do. Really? Yeah. I watch no ads. I had watched I watched regular TV the other day and while we were building the hey Legos. Guys, if you go to the website right now, you're gonna win five thousand dollars. No, you're not gonna win nothing. Well what website? <laughs> I'm going to that one. No, I was watching regular TV uh-huh. and oh my gosh, <laughs> like talk about it was either um Kids, you know, kids with with cancer, yeah. which just ah, or dogs, you know, animals. That that was every yeah, other. Every, you add? It, that was every other commercial. I have ads for tools, cars. This is on regular TV, not not. Oh. Not YouTube. TV, I YouTube, I get good commercials. I'm right. Okay. This was regular right, TV. So I'm just gonna ask them. What do you think is this? Just throw something. Really? Yes. Just just tell me something. What do you think is this? Here. I mean, I'm excited. Something? You're excited. This, I'm excited. I mean, no, you, you. Finally. Yeah, I mean, you called them out on this, man. We're like, dude, where the hell is it? So, anything? Come on, guys. Before I, I, I pop the. I think everybody. Oh, hold on. You got to give them a second, man. I mean, it's like they got it. They got it. Uh, Christian's going to love this. Christian, what is it, Christian? A major award. A major Sound award. treatment. Morel Shallow. Ooh, I like all these answers, dude. What these, is it? So, a major award, uh-huh. which I would love a major award. Sound treatment. Morel Shallows. Uh, Shallows, I like that one. Um, I do, too. Okay, uh, this guy. If, come on. What is it? <laughs> Flea Market Pyramid 5K. Bro, this ain't Big D. I ain't got none of that. Um, what else? A Power 12. Oh, there again, like that. Leg lamp. Oh, leg lamp. That'd be the best. What? The leg lamp from The Christmas Story. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It's a major award. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a wig for Dean. Bro, we need a wig for Fernando. Uh, Morel Shallow Mount Subs. Okay. Gold, gold-plated IRTA2. Man, I love you guys. Ooh, Gately stuff. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I could do that. A yeah. sub. So you guys are guessing all good answers, and and that sucks because every one of those is solid. Like, and I want every one that you mentioned. Powered subwoofer, and we got a couple of those already. All right, come on, let's get to it. So, <laughs> watch it not be what we're thinking it is. <laughs> Pickleball paddles says Haley. Oh gosh, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got work to do. <laughs> A pink piece of paper. What is it? Uh, it's 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 a case. Yeah, it's a case. Anyone? No, bring it over here. Anyone? Well, you can set it on here so you don't have to do that. Macintosh amplifier. Ooh, I do want one of those for my house. What is it? It's, Come it's, on, guys. it's still a case. I know. I didn't realize it came with an instruction manual. Ready? What's in the box? No, no, just set it down. Set it down. We'll go through the whole DMRTA. We got like six of those, bro. Man, you're just making a mess. Ooh. Bro, Barney is here. Everybody's going to get a hug. Phoenix Gold Reactor in the... <laughs> no, it's a Barney. Pop it open. <laughs> there we go. Because we're lonely. Because we we're... need a friend. We do need a friend. Yep. Yep. So, our Barney finally came. There you go. <laughs> he goes, I'll be there in two hours. Uh, yeah. yeah. You, you, you're more than welcome to show up in two hours. We just won't be here. 
Um, but yeah, no, we finally got our Barney. I love the case. You love the case. No. The case is cool. Most people are gonna be, oh, no, it's not here. No, it's put away. Although we just put those on sale. Yeah. <laughs> For, even Haley goes, I knew as I saw the box, she knew what it was. Oh, really? Yeah, because she got to play with it at uh, when they were in Orlando. Uh huh. Yep. So, yeah, we got Barney. Ooh. Feel that head. <laughs> He's got good dome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, the, so for those of you who don't know what Barney is, really? But, no, I get it. So this, this has, my, it's very similar to the Andy that we had earlier here. It's still here. It's just in a drawer. The purpose um, is totally different, but. The purpose is totally different. So if you were to look at an Andy, it doesn't have, it, it has all the controls and everything because Andy's is a microphone. You can do multiple things with it. This only has one purpose. It's the same binaural microphone. Mm -hmm. But what it's designed to do is through the software, it is designed to interact with this amplifier here, this amplifier here, and it does a very lengthy auto tune um, where it will do some magical stuff. So how does it, how does it look hook up to the arrow eight to 12? Um, I don't know, Christian. I don't know, dude. We just we just got it. Uh, Andy has a friend now. Andy does have a friend now. Yeah. So, um, anyways, we just finally got this in. Uh, it's really cool. I've watched it done a bunch of times. Um, so, one of the reasons why we got it is uh, so that we can do some Spanish videos on how to use it. So, we're pretty excited to finally get it in. So this will be for the Moscone amplifiers. Um, you can still do it normal. You can still do all the fun stuff, but this is designed to speed up the process. Good night. And it can do things that, with math, that you just can't do in your head. So it's pretty cool. But anyways, finally got a, finally got our Barney. So pretty excited. We get to play with that probably next week. Start doing some funness. So, yay. Yeah. Um. I don't really have a favorite Lil Wayne song. I just love the concept of oh, Lil Wayne. Oh, look at this. Wow. It's more paper in here. You're so stupid. He he has the job I've always wanted. I just want to be a hype guy. I want to like, you know, be like, what? Yeah. Barney. You know, just that kind of crap. While somebody else is talking, I think that would be the best. Just be like, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes, you can use it with yours. It's, it, yes, it's designed to work with yours, Christian. Relax, you have the brand new DSP. Of course it'll work. Yes, the 20 Ultima is eggshells. Yes, it's very sucky. I think you may want to check Metro because I think they just came out with a new dash kit that is actually the whole dash piece. So I remember seeing that somewhere check metro see if they they make that now because I, I know i think they do because it's to that point where you can't even place a radio in there where, like you can't even touch it but i think the new metro dash kit for that is the whole piece so give that a go and that's it for today guys that's your five minutes we got to get back to work we got an hour i need to plug it in i need to turn it on i need to have it make some noise so we can tune it tomorrow morning you guys have a great rest of your day fernando thank you so much for where watching, they need guys. to go where do they need to go you guys need to go right now, right now, morelhifi.com. Check the new product. Yeah. <sighs> well, good day, everyone, and welcome to 2024. Welcome to 2024. That is That's right. right. This is the first... This is the first thing we're doing in 2024. I last night did a live show with Haley. Did you? Yeah, you, we talked about you the whole time. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. But anyways, we did that last night. Okay. Uh, today, you see, he's getting ready to go. I'm, I'm done, man. No. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you got a couple minutes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, guys. So this Saturday. First, I just want to say I hope everyone had a really nice, safe, happy New Year. Right? That's it. Yeah, that's good. I'll go with that. Uh, this Saturday, we'll be back live. This Saturday? Yeah, this Saturday. Not not the news on Friday, because that's kind of pointless. But Saturday, we'll be back doing Fair doing the show. Yeah. And then Monday, Monday, Andy will be here Monday. Who? Andy. Andy oh, Waymire will be right, here Monday. Right, so yeah. Andy Waymire from 
from Audio Frog. We'll be here Monday on the live show there, so that'll be cool. But we'll be back Saturday. I'll put up a post so you guys know. What's up, Clint? Hey. Is that bedtime? Happy Wednesday, buddy. Yeah, no kidding, right? Um, but anyways, we are here. We're back. And, of course, what better way, what better way to start off the new year having a Jeep? I mean, nothing says... This is not a regular Jeep, bro. This is totally a regular Jeep. Nope. It's an expensive regular Jeep. It's a totally different Jeep. It's a 392. It's it a just means it's got a big air intake, a, a super the motor V8. on it. Should have had a V8. <laughs> Anyways, this was our project today. And it's actually kind of cool because we got to do the Rockford plug and play system. We actually got to put in one of those, you know, and it's the thing we spent four days at SEMA talking about to everyone in the yeah. sun. So we got, to, we got to put one in today and we filmed it. Yeah, Ooh. I know, right? Ah, back to exactly. work, new year, filmed a, a Rockford install. And everything Jeep. starts awesome. Yeah, everything worked. It was great. Well, I mean, what were you not? I don't know. I don't know. But that, that's up, Haley. Hey, Haley. Um, Audio Frog. Happy New Year's, my friends. Here's the Amazing 24. I hope so, man. I hope so. Yes. Uh, Happy New Year's, fellas. Does it sound as good in the bay as it did on the show floor? So I sat in the driver's seat. I've never actually heard the Wrangler because I was in the Gladiator. He was the demo guy for the Wrangler. Um, did it sound the same? Uh, no, this one sounds louder. It sounds better because we did it? No, yeah, it's, it that's what he means. It sounds better because you know. we did it. No, it sounds exactly the same. No, yeah, there's, there's nothing to it. It's, the difference it's, between, you know... The gel is tighter, I guess. What are you talking about? A base. No, no, no. What I'm saying, he's asking, does this Wrangler sound just like the Wrangler that you heard on SEMA? Oh, okay. Not, not whether. Not the... What's the difference between no, the two of them? No, no, no. no. Oh, see, right. see, this is what I'm same talking thing. about. No, it's the same thing. That's the all right. So that's kind of the allure of this is that every single one is going to sound the same. Exactly the same. Mm-hmm. It's simple to do. It's plug and play. It's turn it on, send it out the door. So yeah, it's it's that. Do you have your windshield tinted? No, no. I I, I would never tint my windshield. I have a hard enough time seeing as it is. I Definitely don't, don't need to do I that. Wish. I would. <laughs> Mike, wake up. Who's not yeah, up? Also. Oh, thanks, awesome, man. man. Thank you. Our toilet works now. Hot damn! Fernando killed it today. He laid his New Year's Eve turd in, or New Year's Day turd in there, and you know just kind of killed it. Come on, man. LOL. Mike, Mike, Mike. Um, do either? No. Yeah. Okay. So no windshield tinting. That's definitely tinted. I like it. Yeah, I was gonna say that's definitely tinted. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can tell with the lights on it and everything. It's kind of weird. Um, but no, that's it. So this was this was our day to day. Uh, we we filmed this. We got to do that. Everyone had we had a safe New Year. Um, we got to take down our Christmas tree. So I'll be doing that when he leaves here in the next couple minutes, getting that all boxed up, and mm-hmm. you know, back back to back to this. Has anyone else video sh- slowing random down? Random. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, it is. You know, it's it's the internet. What's up, Phil? Uh, install high tent in that Jeep. No, no, I don't want to do that. But we do have a couple videos on that. Mm-hmm. Um. Did you, by chance, get an opportunity to listen to the Esquology podcast yesterday? No. Yeah. Phil did. Phil. Phil. Uh, that was Phil? Yeah. It? Phil okay. from MTI. Yeah. That's the same Phil? Phil? I didn't see okay. it. Oh, yeah, Phil. Yeah, Phil texted me yesterday. Apparently, you watched it. You had a good time. I, I listened to it yesterday because Brian <laughs> texted me and goes, okay. Brian goes, I like Dynamic EQ. And I was like, oh, crap. Did I say Brian did like Dynamic EQ? So I had to sit down and listen to it. So I was like. And then I called him like, what are you talking about? I didn't say you. Oh, no, no. I, I like it too. It's like, oh, okay. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with Dynamic EQ, go listen to SQology podcast. It was a good time. It was a good show. I enjoyed it. These guys are fun. Uh, hot sauce is keeping Nando looking ages. You're, no. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> go watch some of the older videos, Clint. You'll see that. Uh, no, no. He's... Uh, yeah, his inner white guy's coming Boy, out. He's got like a bald spot. Boy. He's receding hairline. He's getting a big forehead. Still eating yeah. hot sauce, bro. Still, Still eating, eating hot, hot sauce. sauce. He just he just cries more. Uh, nope, all good here in Vegas. I hope so, Mike. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. We can see Mike in 30 days. Um, you, you want me to read it or you, you got? 
Will it? Okay, so exactly. it's a. Will it be fine to run 100 watts over Suggestum RMS amperage? Should I just stick to the exact or underpower them? Sub in question is a JL Audio TW3. So the question is, obviously, if I, 100 watts is not enough to do anything to a subwoofer. As long as you have the gain set properly, you have your crossover set properly, and you've listened to it to make sure that it is not doing anything uh, that it can't do, then you're fine. Because more than likely, you probably aren't going to be maxing out the input voltage on the amplifier, so you still have some leeway on the gain control where you can actually turn it down if you need to. But I can tell you, like, if you've ever seen an amp dyno, like, dy- amps don't necessarily always put out what they're supposed to put out. And so if it says it's a 700-watt amp and you got a 300-watt speaker or they're this case a 600 watt speaker uh-huh. as long as you use some common sense while doing it you should be fine um i i know from experience like rock uh, not sorry not rockford but alpine r types they used to be like max power a thousand watts so i'm gonna go buy a thousand watt amp well, that's max power there's no world in which that subwoofer can handle a thousand watts so they put a thousand watt amp on a, on a 500 watt speaker and just launch it into the stratosphere thinking that it could actually handle that and it can so Anytime you're setting up a system, there should be a knob for, like, just paying attention and applying a little bit of common sense to it. It's a great question to ask, though, because at least you're aware of it. And now that you're aware of it, as long as you're, when you're setting the system up, you don't go ham on it, you'll be fine. I mean, we do it all the time. Happy New Year's from Sydney, Australia. That's awesome. G-Day, mate. I hope your vacations were awesome. So glad you... Listen, we actually didn't go anywhere. We worked the whole time. So we had like Mondays off. That was it. Otherwise, and it's always funny this time of the year. We're super busy. Like I know on the back end side of things um, that you guys really don't get to partake in, so to speak. I've been swamped this whole like time off from doing videos and stuff like that. Still try to get out the Monday show, uh, the Instagram. I didn't put that out. It'll actually be out tomorrow. Um because I was busy all day yesterday with the fam. But, yeah, and then we're doing a bunch of stuff with Mobile Solutions, getting ready for Master Tech Expo, and we're doing a bunch of stuff with Orca. And, and so there was, a, there was a lot of stuff that was like we had to build in and still do, but, you know, whatever. It was, it's good. Common sense. I know. What is the common sense? It's anything but common. How do you feel about MDF speaker rings indoors? Does waterproofing work? I have not used MDF in a door in a very, very, very long time. And we live in Florida where it rains almost every day of the week, it feels like. So there is no world in which MDF works here. Um, However, I know other places where it doesn't rain as much as it does here. But you can be guaranteed that there's going to be water inside the door. So some form of waterproofing on there, whether you're rhino line them or whatever it is, strongly recommend doing that. Um, but you can buy plastic now on, on, on anywhere. Amazon sells plastic. We have links to it on DNF tool drawer. So, I mean, you can get 12 by 12 sheets, 12 by 24 inch sheets. Heck, you can even get plastic on Etsy now. It's pretty crazy. So there's almost no excuse to use that kind of stuff. If you can avoid it other than the cost, I get, uh, if you want to use a crossover in my radio and the amp doesn't have a way to turn the crossover off. How do I do this? That happens a lot of the times with subwoofers, right? Mm-hmm. You keep an eye on the clock? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, right there, the clock is right there on top of it. Oh, yeah, that's a good place for it right there. Yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, a lot of the times you'll get a sub amp and it's the crossover, there's no way to shut it off. All you have to do is turn it outside of the range that you're trying to use on the radio. So, for example, if you're going to be using the one on the radio and you want to, let's say, go crazy and like, I don't, I'm, sometimes I want it 60 and other times I want it 80. On the amplifier, just turn it all the way up to whatever it'll go to, 120, 220, something like that, and that'll put that range well out of what the radio is going to be doing. So it's almost like there's no crossover on the amplifier now, and so you're golden. The same is true with the high pass. So if you're going to be crossing it over at, let's say, 80 hertz or 120 hertz or something like that, if there's a 50 hertz option on the crossover, put it to 50 hertz. Put it to whatever the lowest crossover point is and that way the radio will be working above and outside of the range of that and the other thing too is that it's 
it probably wouldn't hurt anything to stack some crossover on there if you're going to be going like crazy on it. Uh, is there a good way to integrate iPhone connectivity into my 1987 BMW convertible? It depends on which one. I mean, if it's like a 3 Series, there's tons of dash kits. Um, but, yeah, it, it's going to just depend on the radio. Lots of ski, uh, no, keeping stock radio? No, there's, there's no way to do that. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Nobody really does that anymore. Um, that used to be a thing, obviously, like 10, 20 years ago, but now not so much. Fernando, do you miss... Tortas the- de tamal, of course, man. What are those? It's like a, a tamal, a sandwich. You put a tamal. A tamal is a tamale, I'm guessing? Yeah. I don't know. Just, I don't know what a tamal is. I've never actually heard of tamal. tamal. That's, what, that, that's what they call tamal. What is a tamal? Tamale. Okay, so... You called in tamale is actually tamal. Well, no, it's a tamale. It's, it's no. always a tamale. It's tamale. Right, but uh, is that the... Well, that's what I'm saying. For you, like, you call them tamale. But yes, I miss them so much, man. I mean, it's it's great, you know? You put it inside. So you can't get one from the bodega? Uh, I'm pretty sure you can. I was going to say, there's yeah. literally a bodega on every corner. Yeah that, yeah. that you could probably pick one of them up. And you can make one, actually. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I, I don't think you could, but, I mean, you burnt rice. I mean, I burn water, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you ever mount speakers directly to the door or do you always use adapters and spacers Um, if if we can mount it directly to the door then of course we do but the problem is is that there's very few cars that you can do that in anymore Mm -hmm. so yeah I'd say 99 maybe 9 no probably 99 99% of the time there's some kind of adapter, spacer, bracket of some sort that has to go in there. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you just cut the speaker up and use that and do one of those things. Ah. Honda Civic 90, 1990. Yeah, some of the older Civics. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, true. You can, you can, you can. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I said 99. Uh, it's the same. It's, it's the not same. the same. He says it's not the same. I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, if he says it's the same, then it's the same. I, I'm, I'm a part. I'm not. I'm not. I'm unpartial. I don't care. Um, I'll eat them both. I really don't care. Uh, let's hear the audio debate. What is better, a Bluetooth or wired connection? So, if we're talking like ten years ago, Bluetooth sucked. But some of the the Bluetooth connections we have now are really good and. Just FYI, if you're doing wire wireless CarPlay, it is not a Bluetooth connection. It is a Wi-Fi connection. Okay. So most cars that have wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it's a Wi-Fi connection, So, which is 100 times, 1,000 times better than a Bluetooth connection. So um, there's that, which I think is a better connection. If you have a 2015, 16, maybe even a 17 and you're using the Bluetooth connection there, it's a possibility. Like, if it's a Ford, it's going to suck. Um, but, you know, if you're looking at, like, a higher... So there's the thing. Like, if you're looking at, like, a higher-end DSP, um, like a like a bit, bit, Bitcoin from... Uh, uh, Addison? Yes. Or the Atamo? No, what is it called from uh, Moscone? The Amos? The Amos, thank you. Or the Amos <coughs> from uh, Moscone. Mm-hmm. Th- those are going to be, you know, high-res Bluetooth streamers, which are, are better. So, right. um, but otherwise... Plug it in is always... Plug it in is going to sound best, better. The best way, yeah. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back, yeah. Bobby. Uh, have you ran a Morel tweeter in the Jeep JL Dash? Does a brighter tweeter work better for that location? Uh, we've actually, yeah, so yeah. we've ran the, um, yeah, the Morel, yeah. what are they called? The Maximus H-E's. The Maximo. Maximo, Maximo H-E. is a, Yeah, Maximo H-E's, yep. which by the way, this show is brought to you by MorelHiFi.com. That's exactly right, guys. You want to hear some of these amazing uh, Maximo Ultras, Mark IIs. Uh, you can find them in MorelHiFi.com. Oh, you want to see the picture of it? Go here in Instagram and find them, Morel underscore America. Thank you for being sponsored of the show. 
And, and you're, with you're, that, you're out of here. I'm out of here. And if you're looking for an amazing, see, there you go. If you're looking for an amazing morale to check out, check out the hybrid. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Anyways, I love those. I, love those. I know yes. that's your speaker yes, up there on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, anyways, to answer the question, the reason why the morale go go go. go. <laughs> So the reason why the Morel does work really well in the dash of the Jeep is that it does play lower. So you get more vocal out of it than you would just say regular tweeter. However, if you're looking to cut glass like you want it to just like, yeah, then, of course, putting a brighter tweeter, uh, some form of metal tweeter in the dash is going to accomplish that. Like this particular system, the Rockford, they use their all-weather tweeter in the dash and then they use their all-weather six and a half inch coaxials in the lower dash and in the sound bar so this has six tweeters four six and a half and two twelves it is brutal like it is designed to top down go crazy this one has this is a 392 so it's got the crazy exhaust in it not a problem this will just rip through it um a lot of the times you do rockford t2s because it has the metal tweeter which is there again it's a vicious tweeter but the the morels sound really good to me they're a much more musical option which isn't necessarily what you always want for a jeep but yes we have done it and it is a lot of fun uh is usb-c cable superior to regular usb for audio signal hmm i i, I wouldn't think so i honestly don't know i mean it, it can handle a bigger charge but I don't think it's passing. I don't know. I don't know. It, it would. It would just depend on. So a couple things would have to matter. Can it pass more bits over it? And two, whatever is receiving those bits, can they actually do anything with them? Because remember, that's the most important thing. Just because something is faster, more powerful, or better, whatever's on the receiving end of that information, if it can't do anything with it, it really doesn't matter. So if yeah, I, I think that makes the most sense, right? It, it, yeah. Uh, where can I get lossless music anyway to stream it from my phone, or should I get a media player like a file? So that's an interesting question. There are actually a lot of ways to get high-res music now. Um, if you want to own it, uh, HD Tracks, that's hdtracks.com, is a place where you can go and buy some high-res music. Uh, and then you also have Tidal, which is streaming a better better track. Spotify has an HD version they've had for a long time now. Uh, as long as you set it up in your phone, it will stream at the higher bit rate. Uh, Apple has HD uh, available in its um, catalog, So, which, which honestly Apple's sounds the best out of all of them we've ever used uh, if you're an iphone guy there's no reason not to just use apple music it, it just it's far superior as it, you would expect because it's a closed thing but um android wise you know uh spotify uh i think amazon now has a high res the one cool thing about the apple is it will tell you what your sh what what the song is in their library as so it'll tell you what it's re what what you're listening to so to speak which is kind of cool so a lot of it is pretty pretty intense fileage uh what frequency do you use to tune subs all of them um i mean i just i just play music and and listen to the sub i don't i mean i'm not we're not building the box so i'm not worried about what the port is i'm assuming whatever it is is it's what it's supposed to be um, when i buy the enclosure from the person that makes it that's their job not mine um but no, I just play music and, and listen to the way it sounds and, and kind of work from there. Uh, tech tip of the new year. <sighs> read the instruction manual, for God's sakes. That's it. Just read the instruction manual. So many people don't read the instruction manual. It's ridiculous. It's, it's so... And, and, uh, and if you don't know what you're talking about, just don't answer the question. There you go. There's, there's, be honest. Everyone just needs to learn to be a little bit more honest. Uh, which brand has been the best bag for the buck, but also be reliable? Ooh, you know, it's funny you should ask that because I was just talking to that company today. Uh, they were asking us to do some stuff for them that we're going to do. And that company is Kenwood. Uh, I know what you're saying. Wait, what? Kenwood? Kenwood Exelon product is probably the best bag for the buck 
as well as the most reliable stuff. We use it a ton. You guys have seen it in a lot of videos, the 80 2.5 or the 901.5. Those are their two five channel amplifiers. They also have a four channel, uh, two four channels, three mono blocks, along with the two five channels. Um, they make a thousand watt mono. A lot of people don't even know about that, which it, it puts out, I think it put out a little over a thousand watts, like maybe 1100 watts. It was really close to that. Um, so it's full spec, uh, full spec thousand watt amplifier. The five channel, the, the 901.5 puts out an amazing amount of power. Like we were getting like 800 watts out of the 500 watt sub amp side. So with the four channel loaded down at four ohm, um, so it, it's pretty insane. And the stuff is extremely reasonably priced. But as far as reliability goes, there's it's it, the stuff runs forever. Um, I've been using Kenwood Exelon stuff for a very long time. They're not paying me to say this. I just really like how long the stuff lasts. Um, so that's amplifiers. Uh, speakers, amps, and subs, you know, that's that's a whole other topic. Ah, speaker-wise. See, there you go. you got to ask speakers. Um we use a ton of Focal and we use a lot of Morel. Those are the two brands we use a lot of. Um, just because they sound good. But the, the thing is, is like, we don't, everything we sell here is for a reason, okay? Unlike the internet, unlike the dudes, unlike all that stuff, this is what we do every day of the week. So when we use something, we're not guessing. We're using it because... That's what we use. We know it works. We know it does what we want it to do. And we don't have to worry about it, per se. Ah, my arm's getting tired. So there is a little bit different than us and, and somebody else. I really don't have a favorite brand that it's like, oh, my God, this is what I'm going to go to. Oh, because these guys made it. Oh, yay. No, it's not like that. It, it's, a, it's a whole different problem because everything we do has to go off to a customer and so we have to have certain guarantees because i don't ever want to see this thing again you know unless they're coming because they bought a new car so when we install something or when we recommend something or when we do something there has to be a certain amount of we're not going to have a problem with this so all the stuff that you guys have seen us use in these videos we use those things because to me they're just tools they're just tools to get me um, from the start point to the end point, make that customer's dreams come true. After, at the end of the day, all we do is make dreams come true. You know, that's it. We make your, your audio dreams become reality. And I don't want them to be a nightmare. So, you know, when we use products, like when we use Moscone amplifiers or Focal speakers or Morel speakers or Rockford speakers or mini T power amplifiers from Rockford or um, somebody's DSP or something like that, it's not because we're fanboys. It's because we've done a whole bunch of these things and we know we're going to get a very specific end result. That's the most important thing. We want it to do what we want it to do. We knew what this was going to sound like. So it was okay. We could do it. We know what it's going to sound like. We, we sat in this thing for four days. So we know exactly how they sound. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, what do you think of the Blam speakers? We've done a little bit of work with Blams. Uh, we are a Blam dealer, so we have... Some of the products, um, we haven't done a lot with them. And there again, that's one of those products that is very specific. So we have it because there's certain applications that that works the best in, and that's when we use them. Um, I know Arturo, who's on here a lot, he's a big Blam dealer. He loves using Blam speakers. And I love Arturo, so if he likes them, then there's probably a good reason they're awesome. Tidal is a paid music service that you can get for your phone. Uh, it was the original high-res streaming service. I don't know if they've, I think, I know it was on Apple first. I think they finally got it over to um, uh, Android. What's up from Tijuana? Uh, Amazon Music sounds great on Morel Virtus. There you go. Amen. Uh, sorry, Darren. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be more honest, maybe. I don't have to. I mean, you know. Uh, it was just one of those things. It was a lifesaver for me. It kept me from getting in trouble. Uh, I would figure that that HDMI arc cables are even better since I have seen some products use them for audio transmission. Okay. Uh, did you teach Fernando Car Audio, and how long have you been, you two, been working together? Uh, I think we're going on eight to ten years. 
No, somewhere, somewhere in that range. Eight years, seven years, somewhere in that. Did I teach him everything he knows? No, no, no. He was actually working for one of our competitors before we started. Did I teach him everything he knows now? Yeah, yeah. He really, he, he didn't know a lot. The reason we, how we met was he would come over to us and, and uh, he would ask me how to do like steering wheel controls or if he ran into a problem, he would just come ask me. Um, a lot of people do that, which I'm perfectly fine with. It's kind of how this whole thing works. You guys ask me questions, I give you answers. Um, and so we needed a, a second person. And so we hired Fernando and you know, that was it. That was, that was the, that was the long and short of it. Uh, why is my subwoofer rattling when cranked all the way up? Ooh, could be a product defect. Um, like I know sometimes we'll get a woofer and for no reason at all, it just makes a clunkety clunk noise. And it's just like, what the hell is that? Um, and I, I, yeah, it, it's a weird one. Um, but yeah, it could, it could be nothing more than there's something wrong with the woofer somewhere. Yeah. It's very odd. I'm late to the party. It's okay. At least you showed up. Have you had any introduction with audio control speakers and subs? Um, subs, yes. Fernando's been running the sub in his car since they came out. Actually, we still he's still running one of the first subwoofers that ever hit the country uh, in his truck. And uh, sorry, not in his truck, in his car. So yeah, we've been running their subs in his for since it came out. Um, as far as speaker wise. We haven't integrated them into the store per se, but yes, I have heard them. Um, and yeah, a lot of guys like them. Um, we just haven't brought them in yet because for one, we have a lot of other speakers in stock that we need to go through before we bring in another product like that. So from, from the five star sales side, there's just no room for them in the end yet. Uh, are we planning on it? At some point, it's just, Right now, we have a ton of inventory that we need to move through. So, it's kind of where we're at on that one. Uh, hope you had a great new year. It was it was nice. It was nice. It was relaxing. Uh, last famous person car you did and install for, if any. Ooh. So, so... That's a good question. My problem is, is like a lot of the famous guys we did were all sports guys, and I don't know who they were. Like they weren't anybody to me because I was like, I don't know who this guy is. Um, I've done, I've done a Lamborghini, and there again, nothing, nothing spectacular. Like we did some work for, uh, and we never did it. Okay, we never did it with the customer. We were always a third party involved. So we we did work for a car concierge. And the car concierge would bring us the car to do the stereo. So I never met the people that we worked on their cars before. It's so like I did two cars for, and they were just basically fixing stuff that has already been done. So think of like a 911. We did a Gallardo for Batista. And then when Eddie Guerrero died, Batista bought his lowrider. And so we got our hands on that because there was some glitches in it that just needed to be fixed. But it wasn't like a full system or anything like that. It was just fix this stuff. A lot of baseball players, a couple of hockey players over the years. Um, the last, I think the only really like, oh my God, person we did here was some dude that ran the MMA out of kind of like a Dana White, but for Canada. And uh, he had a really nice set of cars. He had a GTE 40 um, that we did for him uh, that we put a full system in. That was right at the time when we were like, I don't want to do custom anymore. So it was like, one of the last custom cars we did. Um, and and that, that was kind of what sealed the deal for me on, on custom was that car because it was literally a 24 hour build. And I, I mean, and I mean 24 hours, not like work 12 and then sleep and then work 12. It was like, get the car, work on it all day, all night and, and hand it off to him the next day. And I was like, I'm done with this. I'm never doing this again. So it was not any fun. Luckily I had a buddy of mine at the time that kind of hung out with me the whole night. Because, I mean, I was here all 24 hours. I mean, I never even went to sleep. I was like, there's got to be a better way. This is stupid. Um, unless you're Christian, you buy everything, right? Uh, when it comes to tweeters, are the same, are some bullet tweeter ones worth it, or should I just stick with the normal size? Um, 
a bullet tweeter is going to make a bullet tweeter sound. Okay, are there better sounding bullet tweeters? Of course there are. It, it's, it's, it, yes, it's going to happen because just like uh, a one inch silk soft dome made by one brand and, and another one made by another brand sound totally different. So it would stand to reason that some bullet tweeters are going to sound better than others. Um, you know, when it comes to high end bullet tweeters, we've done the SPL shows from Hertz. Those are really nice if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, Rockford made a really nice bullet tweeter. Um, I haven't heard the kickers, but I can assume that they sound okay. Uh, I'm just not a bullet tweeter guy, unless the bullet tweeter is 50 feet away from me, in which case it's kind of amusing at that point. Um, but if you're trying to get a bullet tweeter sound, but you only have room for a small tweeter, then I would look at the Rockford T2 tweeter because it's the closest thing we've found to that obnoxious sound, but in a tweeter that's this big and that thin and will fit anywhere. It just, it just lights you up. Audio Control DSP or Alpine. So the only Alpine DSPs I've worked with are the older DSPs. I haven't worked with the new Wave Your Phone Around DSP. Um, we're building the SPL room over there. We started building the display actually the uh, Saturday before we left. We started rebuilding the display that we just got. It's turning out really nice. Um, we're going to put the new six channel Alpine DSP on that. So that'll be fun. Um, the problem is, is like when, when I ask Alpine, hey, could you send me a DSP to play with? They say, yeah, let me think about it. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, it's it's fine, and 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 so for me, it's 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 hard to break away from other things. Uh, now, like the audio control, I know the audio control software back and forward, inside and out. I can do it without even thinking, so I know what I can expect when using the audio control software because it has all these things in it that I've used a million times. So for me, I would probably take the audio control just because I'm used to it. Uh, given the option though, I'm going to look at either a Moscone or an ARC DSP uh, if I want to actually get like down to like, I'm gonna be doing some really badass stuff. Those are the two DSPs I'm gonna look at. And then the third one would be, um, well, the next two that I have to look at would either be uh, the Helix um, and if I was looking at an amplifier I would still throw into that mix Audison but Audison doesn't have their modern DSP in a standalone box yet so it's kind of hard to include them in that like standalone DSP world um, because all their DSPs are built in their amplifiers which I love but as far as standalone DSPs um, and if you look like ARC has the PSM Pro um, and so Moscone has their little DSP also. So there's a lot of little things to do that are a couple hundred dollars more, but not like crazy money. Uh, Greenies from Universal Studios. What's up, Danny? Danny's here in Florida doing cool stuff. The weather's beautiful, man. So he's having a great time. Out of control, I say. Well, there you go. Uh, Fernando's come a long way. Been watching YouTube videos for years. Oh yeah, no, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've often said, if he quits, I'm out, bro. I can't train somebody else. I'm, I'm not gonna do this anymore. So, uh, when he's ready to call it a day, I'm packing it up and leaving. Uh, <laughs> Dean, the Wikipedia of car audio installation. <laughs> uh, any suggestion on a sub for 2018 GMC Four Door Canyon? Uh, so. We have one of those that we're going to be doing here sometime this year. I just say that. I, I know I quoted a guy out not too long ago, and I know he put a deposit. I believe we're going to be doing the Fox box because I think Fox makes a box for that. Um, and I, I want to say it either takes two tens. It might take two tens. So check out Fox Acoustics and see what they have. I think we're going to still do the Comp RTs from Kicker in there, but I'm not sure yet. I don't remember what we talked about. Uh, what is the ideal vehicle to work on and what would you install? Man, I, see, I don't really think of it like that. Um, I, I know a lot of guys, like, uh, case in point, our, our good friend Dougie Fresh works for uh, Tittery, Ground Zero, Sound Digital, 
Um, uh, you know, Ground Zero wanted to build a show car this year, and so he's building a Mini Cooper because uh, Swedish Peter said uh, the best car is the Mini Cooper, and so they're building a Mini Cooper. Um, it really depends. Like, I bought my Mustang, which is sad because I know I'll never do it, but I bought it anyways because if I ever decide to do anything with it, it's 100% iData compatible, so I can integrate into the amplifier or I can put a new radio in it, and it's got a three-way set in it. So these were all things it had over the Camaro, because those were the two I was looking at. Do I get a convertible Camaro or do I get a convertible Mustang? I went with the convertible Mustang because I knew I could do all these things to it. And one day, hopefully, I will, but yeah, I'm not holding my breath. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> Unless you're from Unique Whips and say he did it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was, uh, that was Sheffield's. That was Sheffield's. Cadillac EXT. So we did Gary Sheffield, a baseball player, um, was one of the clients of the car concierge we had, and we did his Cadillac EXT. And then he took it out to Unique Whips, and they repainted the whole thing, baby blue, and then took credit for the install. It happens. Audio control in the house. There you go. What's up? Yeah. Actually, Sage used to work for him. So he tells some really nice stories. Cash was apparently a really cool dude. You know, it's just TV that really kind of um, didn't do him any favors as far as that goes. But that's, that's what you expect. I mean, you know, a lot of people make assumptions about people. Um, but he's like, no, Castro is one of the coolest guys ever. And, and he worked for him for years. Um, hey, Dean, when is the Helix 18 channel amplifier supposed to drop? That's a good question. I honestly have no idea. Um, I would assume any minute now because they've only been talking about it for a while. Uh, I'm not looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not looking forward to it because I got to tell you, man, like 18 channels of DSP is going to be a beast. Um, especially with theirs because you're not, you can't bridge any of the channels. So it's not like you can just really turn it into a nine channel or turn it into a 12 channel or anything like that. It's going to be 18 channels of audio. So that's a lot to do. Like a lot of people freak out when they just do like a DM810, which is 10 channels of DSP and they're only using eight or nine, but it's 18 channels. Holy Jesus. That's a, that's a lot of a lot. Like you're going to be tuning that thing for a day. Easily tuning that thing for a day. Uh, why do some DSPs go up to 26,000 hertz when we can't hear up to 20? Okay, so that's a good question. We can only hear so far, right? However, our hearing doesn't stop at 20,000 hertz, right? It just, it's reduced or it's not as accurate. And depending on how old you are or how young you are, it's it's an average. Remember, it's not like, the, it's, everyone always thinks of things as like finite. Like it's only this. Um, it's not, it's not true. Like some people can hear well past that and other people's old can't hear up that high. The other thing too, you have to remember is that there can't be a wall that we hit because sound doesn't stop. All right. We know that that sound just doesn't just stop. Okay. Um, and, and there again, like if you look at the specs on your equipment, um, like a Macintosh, the Macintosh amp that's on the wall over there. That played from five to 50,000 hertz back in the 90s, okay? There's plenty of amplifiers that still do that. And the reason why they do that is because they need it to stop producing sound well outside of the audible range. Because think of it like this is how the best way it was ever explained to me. If you're running, and there's a wall here, and you boom, you hit the wall, what happens? You fall back, right? Sound is no different. If we put in a stop point, the sound is going to hit that and it's gonna come back and that comeback is gonna be distortion. So we need sound to be able to go well outside of the audible range and disappear, okay? So that it doesn't roll back into the audible range and cause distortion. Now, in doing so, like 20 hertz, 20,000 hertz is always that last thing there's sound past that and there's distortion past that and there's annoyance past that and so being able to control that 
you'd be surprised. It'll actually make things sound better. So um, that's it. That's that's the reality of it. Is it? Don't think of sound as like it's it's this wall that you're you can't hear outside of these. No, it's not true. Happy New Year, everyone! What's up? Out of control. There we go. All right, guys. Hey, listen. It is almost time to go home. I'm pretty excited. I want to get out of here. It's Tuesday night. We'll be back Saturday doing the live show. And then Monday, we're going to have a special guest. Andy Waymeyer from Audio Frog will be here to answer your questions and just have some fun. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. Um, I haven't seen Andy in, geez, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in a while. It's been a couple months, so it'll be nice to catch up with him, see what's going on. I'm really excited to have him in the house because Andy is one of the most knowledgeable guys you'll ever run into. So let's think of some awesome questions for him next Monday because this guy is a genius. And it's an honor to have him in here. I'm super stoked um, to do it. And that's it. That's all we got. Make sure to tune in this Saturday. And keep tuning in on Instagram. We'll be playing along. (coughs) Having a great time. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Good sweet before we go live. No, I mean, tonight when we go live. Oh. When we go live, live at 5. Oh, yeah, live at 5. Yeah. 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 You have one hour. Yeah. Come on, guys. Ooh. But no, we got to clean up. It's been a it's been a hell of a week. And then you make it more mess. Look at that. Well, okay. What the hell, dude? Seriously? Like, there's a trash can in there. Well, no. I, I meant to put it in there. It <laughs> what? <dropped. laughs> no, dude. Okay, okay. So Look every... at this. Look at this. I meant to put it in there, but... Ah! Who cares? All the other ones are sitting right here in the trash can, okay? They're all right there in the trash. Actually, we should probably just take out the trash. But, I, he, dude, he literally walked in here and was like... Yeah, so these magnets are working fabulously. So what happened was, is I went like, I broke these off. Uh-huh. Like that, and then it fell on the floor. So... Whatever, dude. Yeah, I know. What is up, everyone? Hey, everybody. Watch you how to install a backup camera today. Got some nice ideas from it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. That was a while ago. You love backup cameras? I know you love backup cameras. They're your favorite. Yep. So, they're... What you just saw on the laser, this, these. So these are like 100 pound magnets. The problem we were running into is that when we when we make the wire rulers, when we make these guys here, we can get eight out of a sheet and the, it'll do that. But then we have enough to get one more. And for the longest time, we never had an issue with it, but whatever after COVID acrylic is now, um, it, was, it was doing some weird stuff. So, what we're move the whole drawing up and we added in these hundred pound magnets. And what I mean by hundred pound is that they're hooks that stick to the wall and, and whatnot, and you can hang a hundred pounds from them. So these things are like super, super magnetic key. That's word. And so we're locking it into place. So right here is where the little one gets formed. And this would always be where the issue was. This would go sideways from the heat. So now we don't have that problem. <laughs> So we can make the last wire ruler, make the ninth wire ruler out of the thing. And then that gives us these, these little 12 inch pieces, which are what we make when we go to like Knowledge Fest or Master Tech or Mobile Solutions or wherever we go in our travels where we give away tchotchkes um, to, to the people that come to our classes that's where we get that extra little piece from. So nothing goes to waste. This is, so when we're done, we have like these, this, we use it all, baby. I'm efficient as hell when it comes to this stuff because it's so expensive. Holy crap. But yeah, efficiency is key, right? We were even talking about keeping these little pieces here and just like making little tiny keychains out of them. But then... And then we decided no? Then we decided no because... That's just a lot of work. For me, I was thinking to keep these ones. Oh, to beat your kid with? 
I mean, that would be one thing, but... I mean, that's... Chopstick. Chopsticks are cheap, man. Dude, this is free. Speaking of classes, what do we have at Vegas this year? Ooh, Ooh. that is a good one. You know, so that's a good question because we're actually talking about it today because it's getting very close. So just to give you a rundown of what's what's going on, obviously we're going to we're going to Knowledge Fest Vegas. Yep. Then the following month we'll be at Master Tech Expo. Correct. And then the month after that I'll be in Canada at CMA, which is Canadian Mobile Audio. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Um, CMA. CMA. Country. Country. Country Music Awards. So at Knowledge Fest yep. in February. We're doing a class Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, which is called the Five Star Way. In that this class, is this is the way. These are not the droids you look for. Um, oh, it's Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike whatsoever. Whosoever? You should just call it Mike, Mike, Mike. Anyways, um, so the class we teach at Knowledge Fest, the Five Star Way, is because they wanted us to do one more social media class, which I was like, Totally. Because there's not enough. <laughs> there's not enough of them, I mean, we haven't been doing it for like six years now. Um, so I was like, you know what? I have, a, I have an idea. They sent me over a bunch of ideas, and I took those and I, and I said, you know what? I have an idea. The five star way, and we're going to be doing a class. It's a two part class, so it's only an hour class. But the first half of the class is going to kind of go over the history of how we got to where we're at. This. And the second part of the class is going to be more business conscious is how we've used that to fill the install bay with cars and make Paul a bunch of money. One car, though. Audio systems in the house. What's going on? Hey, did you register? That is Junior? Yeah. You registered, right, for Master Tech Expo. You better, bro. I sent you, I sent you over a code, so make sure you didn't. If you didn't, let me know, and I'll, I'll send it again. Um, I got to call all those guys next week. All right, so that, that's Knowledge Fest. So 9 o'clock Saturday morning. We'll be doing the Five Star Way. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about it because I got Fernando. If you've ever been to Warner Classic before, Fernando's supposed to be there. He usually just stands in the back of the class and looks angry. Give me your angry face. See? And he'll. And every time I say a cuss word, he just kind of rolls his eyes. Okay. So this class, he's going to be in the front with me. We're going to cuss a lot. We're, we're going to cuss. Like, we're going to cuss a lot more. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited because he's like, this class really needs to have him in it because... I'm always he, in there. This class needs to have his participation in it. So if you've never been to one of these, it'll be fun to hear Fernando talk uh, with his hands in his pockets. Yeah. <laughs> Stereo Steve. <laughs> no, one hand in the pocket, the other hand's on his camera. That's right. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You never know that. Yeah. Steve, Steve's been there enough. Right. Uh, I have, but I, but I will got all the info. Dude, registered. All right, so now for Master Tech, Ooh, which I'm is excited. the month after that, which all you guys should be going. Um, if you're in industry and you want to go, you're homeless. If you're I might interested. have access to a coupon code for you. So let me know. Send me a DM me in, on Facebook. Don't DM me here because I honestly I've, n- I've never used DM on Instagram. DM me on Facebook if you're in industry. I'll see what I can come up with for you. Um, I, I think for anybody else, I think I think next this Friday. Is for mm, knowledge Fest. This, no, this is for Master Tech. We're, we're past Knowledge Fest. Okay. We're on a Master Tech. Oh, so you have a code? I, I might. I might. I might have one somewhere wow. that I can find. Anyways, for Master Tech, uh-huh. we have a bunch of classes that we're going to be part of, which is pretty scary. So... Sunday, we're doing Sunday classes that anyone can attend. You just have to register for them. Um, and for that, we're going to be doing uh, wiring, clean wiring. Uh, and that's going to be a, 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 probably the most detailed, intense wiring class that we've done. We've done a lot of different wiring classes over the last couple of years where we kind of just talk about stuff. But this one is going to be amplifier-centric, amp boards. Um, and we're going to have, if, if everything goes according to plan, um, we'll have like displays displaying the different kind of styles of wiring i don't know how i'm going to get them there yet so i'm still working on that this is of course the audio frog uh this is going in fernando's car this is going to be the new lab i had some time the other day and i got this all set ready to go the four channel the monoblock anyways back to master tech 
So with Master Tech, we have the Sunday class, which is Fernando and I are going to be talking about wiring. On Monday, we're going to be doing a first class, which is part of one of the tracks, and we're going to be doing proper it, proper tools and techniques for getting a car ready for the installation. So taking the car apart, putting on protection, <coughs> some basic bracketry that might be required. All the process. So the process of the actual install part of things. And then that is going to dovetail into three more classes that are going to talk about system design. And we have, it, dude, in that cor- in our course track, you're going to start with us two. Uh, we have one more partner that we're going to be doing it with, which we'll talk about more as it gets closer. Uh, and then the three more classes, two of which are going to be Ken Ward and Andy Waymeyer teaching their own classes. So this is going to be pretty insane. And speaking of um, Andy Waymeyer, we're going to have him here Monday in the Bay, in the Bay. Here. Here in the Bay. And I'm excited about this here because there's a bunch of questions I want to ask him and get his... Like when he explanation, got No, get his oh. explanation on them for you guys. So Monday is going to be a super informative live show. Um, so if you have questions, ask him tonight on the live show, and we do it at 5 o'clock, which is in 40 minutes, 50 minutes. But Monday, I'm going to ask Andy to explain to you guys about all-pass filters. I'm going to ask him to talk about up-mixing, um, the, the things that you guys off, like that kind of stuff. So... Monday is going to be one of those great classes. Monday is going to be one of those great shows here to just tune in and listen. Yeah. Uh, not worry about what six and a half you need. Um, so okay. it's, it's going to be a great show. Now, back to Master Tech Expo. So we have the two classes we're going to be teaching at Master Tech Expo. And then, on top of that, we are running the 12-volt clean wire challenge. That's going to be ours to run. Uh, we ran it last year. We're going to be running it this year. We still don't have published who's competing in it yet uh, because I'm waiting for the last two contestants. And once I get to notify them, which is hopefully next week, then we get to start uh, letting everyone in on the big secret who's going to be competing this year. Now, the build-off is going to be happening, and we'll be talking more about that as time goes because we want you guys to start betting on that and telling us what team you want. So that would be pretty cool. And then at the CMA, which is the month after that, which will be April. Honestly, I don't know what I'm doing there yet. I'm going to be there with Automobility, which is Rockford, Canada, Memphis, Canada, and Electromedia, Canada. So that's the three brands that they, big brands that they represent. So I don't know what I'll be doing there yet. But we have a lot. So lots of opportunities to see us and learn some cool stuff. Or just hang out. We love hanging out. I don't know what he's doing. Um... Suggestions for factory replacements in 2018 Ram 15 non amplified system. If you just, I mean, dude, we recommend Kenwood 6903s, KFC, KFC X 6903s, something like that. Yeah. Um, it's a great speaker. We put yeah. them in all the Rams. Uh, it's really easy to install. They sound fantastic. It's a three and a half coaxial on the top of the dash, the six by nine mid base in the door. Um, sounds great. Gives you everything you're looking for. Uh, yeah. So. Outside of that, there's a ton of other things as well, but that's going to be the simplest, most cost-effective, get you some good sound and make life easy, which we all love easy. If in case you're wondering, it takes about six minutes to print one of these. Uh, Ooh, that one screwed up. Ah, What the heck happened here? Okay. All right. Hey, Fernando, can you hold this for me? Sure. I'm kind of busy right now. But... You're not busy. Here, scroll through there and see if there's any other questions. It's going to be facing you. All right, hang on. Let me swap it. How do you swap it? Uh, it's on the... Yeah, yeah, that. All right. Uh, he say he hasn't. Audio systems. I know, I got that. You oh, scroll, okay. scroll down. You're, you're way up at the top. Oh, shoot. Focalke 2s for the RAM. They sound amazing. They do. They do. That's Mike. Yeah. What's up, Mike? I mean, if we want even more amazing, let's put some aerospace in there. <clears throat> more amazing? More amazing. Aerospace. More than the K2s? I, mean, you uh, know, I don't know, man. K2 money. Let's do some K2s. I mean, no power, right? 
Hey guys, today I got my keys to my own stereo shop. Oh, congratulations. That's Gerardo, that's awesome. Hopefully I will be open by the end of this month. Congratulations, brother. Welcome that is awesome. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know. Haley, hi. Oh, Haley's there? Haley's here, yeah. she's always here. Is the show tonight at five? Yes. The show is tonight at five. Make sure five. you tune in. 45 minutes, guys. 45 minutes. Yeah, it should give us enough time to print five more rulers. I just got back from the SPL show. Oh. We need to know what SPL show to go to this year. What kind of SPL is the SPL show to go? Yeah, because we're going to go to one of them. I just, I don't, I need to know which, which one we need to go to. I'm thinking it's that, the big one up in, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Indy. laughs> Okay, so this is a happy new year to all of you guys. But most beautiful, but especially to the most beautiful woman in car audio, Mary Lou. Dude, did you see her driving a Tesla the other day? Um, did she buy a Tesla? No, no, I think she was uh, just test driving a Tesla. Oh, uh, she's thinking of buying a Tesla? No, it was oh, scary, wow. bro. Yeah. Barbecue sauce. Best signal for aftermarket suck factory subwoofer or front doors it's a 2021 tolerate Tell harman what. that's what i say yeah uh with the harman kardon system so if it's a telluride more than likely it's gonna be the factory subwoofer it's gonna be what you're gonna want if you're doing a sub um okay that's where that rta comes in handy for sure what is rta real-time analyzer uh, Do you have one? Yeah, we can get an ITA too. Um, it's, there's still a video coming out showing you how to do exactly what you're talking about, or at least our process. But either way, yeah, you're, you're more than likely going to want to get the sub on that one. Slamology, um, they say. Slamology. Yeah, I think that's the one in Indy. It is? Yeah, I think so. In Indy? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Know, right? Yeah. Indy? Indy sucks. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather not to go. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like, oh man, we gotta go to Indy for a freaking show. Bro. I know. Uh, Morel Titanium Sub. Is the SQ worth getting one? Mm. That one? Uh, that's no, that's one. the Ultimo. What is it, Titanium? I don't know. I don't know, because I mean, there's only two subs in the 12. Yeah. That's the Ultimo, and the other one is the Primo. Yeah. I think that's what you meant when you say titanium. Titanium yeah. sub. I think that's what. Because this is what we have, and I think that's uh. Let's see. So you have. Primo, the ultimate TI. That's the titanium. That's that one. No, no. That is, that is the, not that one. This one's different. This one has the cast aluminum basket. So the, that one is under reference. This is where it always gets confusing. That's the... Subwoofers. Subwoofer. So, that's the new one. No, you, you pass it right there in the bottom. Right, but this is this is just yes. That's the Ultimo Titanium. That's that one. That's that one. That's that one. Yes, because it has the yeah. stamp steel basket. This is under resolution, which is the TI, which is that guy, which okay. has a giant cast aluminum basket. Okay. Um, I mean, if we're trying to decide between going with that guy there or that guy there, if you've got the money, obviously that guy there. But I can tell you, those are what is in the the Helix system. I'm sorry, the Brax system we did is a set of those, and those are impressive as shit. Um, that one's mine. At some point in its life, it'll actually do something. But um, they're very impressive. Either one, take your pick. If you got the money, go for it. When installing a subwoofer to a factory system, I generally pull signal from the largest diameter speaker. You'd be correct in that, Steve. 
the only th- time you run into an issue with that is in some of the Fords. It's some of the Harman systems, like the BO. Those subwoofers aren't really doing subwoofer stuff. They're playing, they're, they're doing like, just making noise. Um, and not good noise. They're just flapping around in the back um, to vibrate the truck. Like that new stupid rugby ball subwoofer sucks. But yeah, generally that is the rule of thumb is to get the smallest or the, the, the <laughs> thing that makes the most bass. Uh, Jethro does some SPL shows at the St. Pete Distillery. He's doing one on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, I get his, yes, Jethro does do those. And one of these days I should go to that. But we want to go to, like, a big giant one, man. We want to go to the one, like, oh, bro, did you go to that? So that's, you know, one that involves a plane ticket, more than likely. RTA. Uh, Mary Lou is very intelligent. How come she doesn't teach class with you guys? It's not an intelligence thing. There's some extremely intelligent people in this industry that will never teach a class because they don't like standing up in front of a class. You know, you guys got the, the like, she sat here with us. I can tell you there was plenty of time she did. She was here. She didn't want to do that. Um, we got her comfortable enough to, to participate in the show. It took us more than one time on to do that. Not everyone is a, like, Fernando doesn't like getting up in front of people, you know, but he can do this all day long, you know. Nope. It, it's it's a comfort zone. It's, that's just it, you know. I'm not sure where the mid and front, maybe six and a half rear subwoofer, no info. Yeah. Fernando, Buenas Dardes, Dean, good afternoon, senor. Hola. Hey, man. How are you? Thoughts on those Audi BO tweeter designs? I don't know what you mean to mean. You know those that come up out of the dash? I think those are silly. What are your thoughts? I'm thinking of getting a set of Rockford... MP100 times 1K, the mini silver silver 60 watt mono amps. I want to use them to power a set of tweeters. I'm using the DM6 way. Alright, I gotta know what the hell those are. Because there's those weird amplifiers that aren't really amplifiers. MP100. Huh? Just what he gave me. Oh, oh the these. Ones. Yeah, those aren't amplifiers. Those aren't amplifiers. Oh, They're not really amplifiers. No, those aren't going to do what you want it to do. Mm-mm. Those are not. Ma- so we actually have a video on those that we did a long time ago. If you really want to dive into what those are, but those are not standalone amplifiers that you can connect to do like what you're talking about. Um, I would not use them for that at all. That's not what they're designed to do. Um, there's no preamp on those. Those are designed Those are designed to hook up to existing speaker wires that are already coming out of, like, say, a radio, and using the power that's coming out of those to up the voltage and give you more power. So think of it as a step-up transformer for a speaker speaker and amplified output so you could take something that has like 15 25 watts and turn it into 60 to 100 watts or whatever it is um but not as a standalone amp that's not what those are so they won't they won't do that um we do have a video on those because when they first came out years ago we did that because there again it made no sense and so we saw what they would do um but that's what you want to do is not what they do so don't waste your money uh, Fernando, did you ever work with Ricardo in Mexico? No, never. Mm. But um, we hang out every time he comes over here, you know? Yeah. With a few classes together. Um, so, yeah. He's a cool yeah. guy, man. Ricardo, monster. Monster by Ren Hell. That's exactly how you pronounce that. I know. You guys have pounded into my all pro Chrysler coming soon. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. What are you talking about, Mike? Pro. Pro series. Yeah, I know, but I mean, Pro 3-Way and Pro Amps. Yeah. Oh. And the Chrysler? Wait, what Chrysler? Yeah. He's already yeah. got all that in his... Oh, is he taking no. out... <clears throat> he has the... Oh, uh, he has the one. He has the ones. 
Ah, so he's gonna take out the ones. All right, so because he Mike's, has the aerospace. Yes, he has the he has so the older eight I'm, to twelve. I'm guessing, I'm guessing he's gonna so take he's gonna it out, take out the, the ones because yeah. he has the older ones. So he's gonna take out the ones and he's gonna go pro, and then he's gonna take down and he's gonna put. Okay. The, yeah. Yeah, aerospace. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man. Oh, look at Mike, uh, dude! Look at Mike. Like here, I gotta change the. You got. I gotta change this. No, you're fine. Just grab the phone. Take that. And stare at yourself on that. I don't want to. Um, I know. Oh wow, Mike! Way to go, buddy. I know. Apparently, he's making way too much money all of a sudden. I mean, I mean, why not? I hate it's it. Vegas, baby. That's Everybody true. makes a lot of money in Vegas. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. We should go to Vegas. Well, we'll be in Vegas very soon. I don't want to go. <laughs> That's not what you said. Totally it's so forward. dry. It is so dry. No, I, I don't like I just, it. I'm still, I, I don't think my lips have healed from freaking <laughs> You see how I'm coughing? It's because of Vegas. Oh, is that that's what it is? still there. Yeah, no, that's just because you have a crappy immune system, bro. That's not true. You take some multivitamins. I do it every day. I take two a day now. Yeah. Some One of the guys came in and goes, I, I got to take two a day. Uh, go, Maybe what? Andy can explain the one watt on the Twitter, because you suck at it. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's not my fault. You can't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, you yeah. know, you can ask that. Uh, if he can do it without diagrams, because it really helps when you have diagrams. Oh, we can put diagrams. Yeah, I know. You know, we'll see. We'll see if he can. I don't know. We'll see if he can do it. But I, I think he's Ready? basically. I mean, I just copy what he said. So. Yeah, for sure. What about tweeters? Let's move it over away from the loud thing. What about tweeters? They play at 150 watts. There's no tweeter playing at 150 watts. It's not happening. My tweeters play to 250 watts. Your pleaders, yeah, your pleaders, your pleaders do. Um, anyways, we'll save that for Monday. Uh, what do you guys think of Center Channel replacing them? What are you gonna power it with? This is one of those touchy topics that really kind of aggravates me. I, I like the center of speakers. However, the problem that we run into is that, for one, there's no, right now, up mixing isn't a thing, so you're just gonna power it off with something. Two, amplifiers aren't really designed with the center channel in mind. So we have five channel amplifiers, we don't have a six channel amplifier that has like a tweeter output. So there's very, the aftermarket world is not really taking the center channel thing seriously, which is kind of annoying. Um, and every time we talk to manufacturers about it, they're like, hey, this has a center channel. It'd be really nice if we could, you know, maybe they don't sell a la carte speakers for them. So, You're like, crazy. you can't just buy a three and a half. You got to buy a pair of three and a half. So you can't just buy a four inch. You got to buy a pair. So there's a lot of things that, that, that make center channels not fun for aftermarket, which is kind of stupid. So... Oh. No, no, they don't lie on their specs. It's not a spec thing. It's it's just a reality thing on the tweeter. Listen, don't worry about it. We'll have Andy talk. We'll talk to Andy about it on Monday. Um, see how it goes. I put three and a half C3 MI 250 on the 3K. There is a preset up with center channel. Yeah, of course there's a preset. But it's not like it's up mixing it to actually give you a true center channel. It's just playing some version of sound through the center of the dash. So, but no, that's cool. I, I think it's a great idea. I, I don't not like center channel. I think it's, I, I, I would love to do more of them, but I also, if I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna do them in a way that actually makes the most sense possible. That's what we do. All right, listen, we gotta go, we gotta finish, we gotta clean up, we gotta get everything set up. We'll be live on YouTube, Facebook at five o'clock. Make sure to tune in, we're back, it's fun. That's it, Fernando. Guys. Don't forget to check out morelhifi.com. This is the place that you can find cool stuff about karate, amplifiers, all that stuff. So morelhifi.com here on Instagram. Thank you for being a sponsor of the 5 Minute Good 5 Star, guys. Bye. See ya.